Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise. I hope you guys are ready. Yeah. It is playoff yeah. time. After all the hours, the weeks, the months, it all comes down to this. The journey to the grand finals is almost complete. Domination. They done it again! Unbelievable! And the rock stars of the Overwatch League continue to crank out power cords. Ooh, get rocked! There's only one week left, so if you want to stake your claim, cement that legacy, there's no time like the now. We know it won't be easy to hold that trophy, to wear that crown, but if you want it, come and get it. Good afternoon, Overwatch fans! We're coming to you live in Los Angeles at the Blizzard Arena. We have a pretty packed crowd here. Our final playoff matches. I am Achilles, joined by Wolf as always. Here to bring you another playoff game presented by Xfinity, of course, and man, we're getting down to the wire here, Wolf. We've got two more series in the Blizzard Arena, then that grand final at the Wells Fargo Center. Today, it's gonna be the Spark going up against the Shock, looking to win the right to play against NYXL and try to make it to that grand final. A lot of history to be written in these final two days here at the Blizzard Arena, heading into the grand finals. Both of these teams, the San Francisco Shark at, uh, Sh Spark and Hangzhou Spark, you and I have been internally calling this the Shark, shark match. Spark, you know. <laughs> They both 4 0 their last opponents, and they both got knocked into the loser bracket by reverse opponents, as we mentioned on the pre show. So there's a lot of parity here. There's a lot of, you know, parallels you can draw between these two teams. And it feels like something's got to give between these two teams that had massive, dominant performances against their previous opponents, the Rain and the Gladiators. So someone has to go home here this afternoon and. The winner is going to face off against the New York Excelsior. It's a great end here to our playoffs leading into grand finals. Yeah, and kind of no matter how you perform here today, I think you have to be scared going up against NYXL given how close that series was versus the Vancouver Titans just yesterday. Went the distance all the way to seven games. Can we get that here again today? I'm down for it. Maybe the crowd is as well. Maybe the players will be ready for it uh, on the stage when we get them out here. But I hope this one goes the distance. This could be an absolute banger of a match. Hangzhou have been looking hot, especially after taking down the Atlanta Reign. They certainly have. Hangzhou really stepping it up all season long, but it feels like here at the end, they've ramped up to their fullest potential. They have a great understanding of the meta. Godspeed first in terms of hero damage per 10 on the do on the Reaper and Bazzi. Second, of course, in eliminations on the Doomfist. He's getting a lot of these picks, not first, but second as well. And Hangzhou Spark is able to turn a lot of fights that seem otherwise lost. And that's one of the big things to look forward to if you're a Spark fan here, is the DPS duo that is Godsby and Bazzi, how well they work together, how they set up kills, and how many team fights they can turn together. Look at these rankings here as well. And when you look at how the, you know, the Reaper and Doomfist roles work, it's so important to get that team fight winner up their second and third, and that's in postseason. So they could take out the shock here, get those early kills, especially on the support line. This team could upset the team that everyone is saying should be the champions. It very well could happen. We'll have to wait a little bit longer to find out who's going to be starting things off with a victory. But first, we heard from Troy Yeoman before. I had some less than stellar words to say about the Spark, despite their hot streak as of late. Now let's talk about your next opponent, the Hangzhou Sparks. Um, what's your personal opinion on the Hangzhou Spark, and also how confident are you that you guys could beat them? 사실 Hangzhou는 그냥 um, 좀 애매하다 해야 되나? 막 엄청 막 특출난 곳이 없어서 그냥 딱 보통한 팀인데 그냥 저희가 저희 팀이 좀 거기서 준비를 잘 해서 저희 스타일대로 가면은 저희가 무난하게 이길 것 같아요. I personally believe Hangzhou Spark is um, just average. They don't really excel in one area. So if we just prep well and just go with our own play, play style, I don't think there will be any problems for the San Francisco Shock. Boldly stated there by Trey Hilbin. This is how these guys have matched up across the year. They have played three times. 
and they've only taken a single map away from the Shock. That was in Stage 1 and 2, where things were a bit more dominant. And then, of course, in the semifinals there for Stage 2. So they haven't played in the latter half of the season. Yeah, they, these matches here were obviously in the GOATS meta, the 3-3 meta, as we've been calling it this year. And they were very much one-sided in favor of the Shock. But both of these teams kind of relied on the GOATS meta all the way until the end of the season, but they both kind of excelled in this new meta as well. We'll find out which one of these teams is going to be more dominant because they stylistically do match up exactly the same way, just like those matches the Shock took earlier this year. I mean, the Shock, you know, feeling cocky clearly from what Trey Coben said, but also because of their depth that they have on the team, they have a very deep roster waiting on the sidelines that can step in at any given moment, Striker. Architect, Sinatra, of course, our MVP, as well as Rascal. These guys have been lighting up the stage every single time they make an appearance. This team is filled with role stars. They are filled with MVP candidates, as well as, of course, our winner of the T-Mobile MVP in Sinatra. And this is a team that has so much flexibility across a longer series because of it. So depending on what maps we do end up seeing, you know, if that series does go longer, the depth will really help. Whereas for the side of the Shock, we haven't, for the side of the Spark, we haven't really seen that much roster depth as of late. You know, no yep. Smite's been on the bench, Crystal left, obviously, and, you not know, we're not, we're not seeing Adora anymore. So when you look at the hero usage here across the board here for the San Francisco Shock, you can see there's a lot of variety in this roster. And depending on what map it is, they're going to pull out different heroes. And they're also really good at adapting on the fly. You see that Tracer usage. Sometimes that's in an overtime scenario where Sinatra comes out on Tracer, one of his more signature heroes in the past, and is able to carry their team to that crazy clutch team fight win. We'll see if they're going to need those crazy team fight clutch victories here, or if they can take it fairly cleanly. We're going to find out. Let's go ahead and get this party started. Bring in our first team. It's the Hangzhou Spark. I think you bet about how Troyo Bin said in his interview that this team seems average, nothing stands out. And I think that's what everyone was saying about this team at the beginning of the season. But they just kept winning and they kept climbing up the ladder. And now they're here in our top four. And if they take this, they move on to face New York. You can call them average all you want, but they work well together and they've made it this far. What's two more series to the grand finals? Starting roster, the starting six, everything we've been seeing for the postseason is this roster here. Bazzi on the Doomfist, Godsby on the Reaper. This is a terrifying team, and they may be able to pull the upset off here this evening if they could just play well and keep their heads cool here against the favorites to win the whole tournament. It'd be absolutely insane if they could take in the last hope of China. Of course, last chi remaining Chinese organization with the last remaining Chinese player in the playoffs. And Gu Shui, one of our T-Mobile MVP candidates. So you can, they can take down the actual MVP, the winner of that award. As we go ahead and bring out the next team, it's the San Francisco Shock. It feels like destiny that this team should go to Philadelphia in the Grand Finals. Sinatra really coming online this year, invested heavily in this player, did the shock last year, and he's come up big for them. Whether it's the Zarya, whether it's the Doomfist, the Tracer, his hero pool is big, and this team has adapted so quickly into a new meta. They're one of the few teams people said, if it's not 3-3, if it's not GOATS, I don't know how far this team can go, and yet they look so clean, so composed, in our postseason, despite that loss, that upset loss to Atlanta, they have been tearing their way through the loser bracket. And the San Francisco Shock here looking to just take Spark out one more step to that grand finals. That's what this match is about today for these two teams, is taking that final set. And when you look at this matchup between these two teams, there's a lot of key things to keep in mind. But to kind of break these things down here, you know, MVP, right? Sinatra, one of the players that you really want to focus on. But when you look at the Sigma battle as well between these two teams, in the eye test, Rhea has seemed to be more impactful. Not to say that Choi Ho Ben has had a weak performance on the Sigma overall, but it feels like Rhea is working with his team better overall, despite Choi Ho Ben putting up the numbers. And Bebe, lastly, he's had really clutch heals in overtime team fights. His coalescences have been excellent. He's one of these flex support players that everyone's been sleeping on all season long, but he's coming up big in the postseason right now. This is the player to watch out for on the Spark when we go to those crazy team fights 
in overtime on the cart. He's staying alive. He's keeping everybody healed. Yeah, definitely was up for consideration for player of the match in the last series that, the, that he had played in. But everybody on this roster really has leveled up their performance. I mean, it's a night and day comparison from when you take a look back at Stage 1, Stage 2, during that 3-3 meta just didn't seem to suit them. But now here, with what we have in the playoffs with Sigma coming through, the Spark have absolutely been excelling. The Shock going to be looking to take that next step forward, as you said. We'll go ahead and take a look at our map set presented by Toyota to see what we, where we will be beginning. It's going to be on Busan for control. And then from there, again, just in case you tuned in for the first time, Loser will select the following maps. What a story it is for the Spark, who had such a tough lead up to this moment, this season. No stage titles, no great performances in playoffs, didn't make every playoff. The Shock made every single finals. No one expected them to be in the loser bracket. Most expected them to be the winners going into the first seed of the grand finals. That's Vancouver instead here in our 2019 season. But the Hangzhou Spark, could they be the team to make the crazy upset happen here. It's been up and up for this team all year long. Mirror compositions here after we see the teleport come out for the shock. So I'm going to get to that point as quickly as possible. Sinatra now going to be looking to set up some picks here for his squad. We're coming to match them. Punch charged up, gets a connection, gets stunned though. Manages to jump out with that. Seismic slam to keep himself safe for the moment. Gushui and Rian both getting tagged up. Sinatra goes in with another punch. Forces the Sigma off the point there for the moment. As he rejoins into the back line with the rest of his team. Mark, no one's going to be taken down. Triple being chipped as the point is unlocked. As he charges up another punch, going to be hitting Smurf, who's going lower and lower. Had that fortify, so didn't get slammed into the wall, but Striker going to be taken down by Godspeed. Manages to find that one kill. Now Smurf and Sinatra both going to fall as Godspeed manages to find himself a double kill. We created with a boulder on that exit there from the side of the shock, but it will be the spark locking down the point first. More healing is committed to Godspeed, which allows him to do over double the damage Striker did in that last fight. You can see it in the ult charge as well. Just more consistent damage output when you're having this fight where there's no real crazy picks coming through from the Doomfist. It's that Reaper damage that matters most. Now they have control of the point. They have the faster sound barrier as well. Shock going to be a tough retake if they're going to make this one happen. Already though, Sinatra going to be picked off. There's Bebe. We were just talking about him before we got into the game. And just to find that crucial kill on the enemy Doomfist and the Shock have to call the retreat. The only way that they could have won that fight... Oh, it's, it's over already. The only way they could have won that fight is if Sinatra was able to get an opening pick on the Doomfist. And the Spark are playing so defensively against enemy Doomfist. We saw it in their previous series. And they're shutting down a lot of these engages that happen ultless. And Sinatra, he comes in early trying to look for that pick and they just wait for him. And it's Bebe who scoops up the kill, but everyone was focused on him. They are going to have a lot of ultimates to try to engage here, but Spark have the counter ultimates, so they're going to try to trade up, but easier said than done when IDK has that sound barrier. Godspeed looking at the TP into the back. Christian going to be teleported there by Rhea. That Blossom is out, not able to find anything so far. Gushway is going to be taken down by Striker. Finds that opening kill, but Bazzi comes up clutch. Manages to find two. Now a third on the back end of that Meteor Strike. And that is just going to be the San Francisco Shock getting tucked in for bed as he finds a final kill there onto Violet. We're at 76% for the Spark. Spark, or, you know, a lot of teams right now are talking about aggressive engages, but the Hangzhou Spark are taking defensive engages here in the postseason. They use their sound barrier early, but they know that the follow-up with Bazzi's Meteor Strike there when Rhea uses Gravitic Flux second is going to be the better one. Shock almost have nothing now to recontest with, only Striker me in the back. Bazzi going to be taken down. Trey Hoban finds a crucial kill. Off getting tagged off, but now IDK punched into oblivion. Will be eliminated. Gushway manages to finish off Striker while he's in the middle of the death blossom, but Sinatra finishes off Gushway. Scrappy fight back and forth here, but it's just going to be Gatsby and Aria playing up at the point. And they will both be taken down the shock. Not going out without a fight. They finally get the flip at 99%. They finally get that ultless fight they've been looking for. Sinatra getting that pick, and then Striker comes through, scoops up the rest with that Death Blossom. Now they're going to have to defend for a long time. Luckily, they have their own Coalescence built now, because without that, this would be a very difficult hold. They can use that when Bazzi tries to engage, when he has no escape, blow him up first, and look for follow-up kills. Bazzi needs to be careful with how he engages because of this. Coalescence is going to be out. Godspeed already taken out. Sinatra 
finding that rocket punch yet again. Now goes in a bit deeper as they look for any stagger kills that they can possibly find. The whole members on the side of the spark going lower and lower. Sinatra dives in, gets halted back through, and Rhea will be able to pick him. They're gonna become they're gonna call Miss. essence to this. They're gonna push forward towards the point. They nearly have the sound barrier up, but Moth might be able to buy them enough time with one of his own. Meteor Strike now coming out from Bazzi, looking for a pick. Drops out straight on top of Troy Helmet, gets rid of him. So now there's no Gravik, Flux in the fight from the side of the shock. Speaking of which, Rhea's gonna be committing his. The beat comes in from Moth. Another punch into the back, and Smart's going lower and lower. Now gets taken down. Sinatra eliminated as well. Clip is, is there for the Spark. They're back in control, and the OT is bleeding away. The shock just cannot stay on the point. First round goes the way of Hangzhou. Everyone has been talking about aggressive play styles that have risen to the top of the postseason. I, I mentioned it just before, but the Hangzhou Spark, their play against Atlanta and in this first control map has been completely focused on taking these fights after cooldowns are used from the Shock. They're waiting for Sinatra to come in. They're waiting for Moth to use his sound barrier. They're passively like waiting for that pick. When Bazzi gets that follow-up attack there, he gets a rocket punch kill. And then Bebe commits the Coalescence. It's a fight that looks like on paper, Hangzhou Spark not gonna commit any ultimates. They're not gonna commit into the fight. They're not gonna try to flip it. But all it takes is that one pick when Shock overextends, and then they press the go button. They are so patient. In a lot of ways, it's really reminiscent how New York played the first three stages of GOATS. Just attack second, wait, react to your opponents, and they're doing a great job of it. Striker again, gonna be TPing the team forward. Joins in with a shadow step as well up on the high ground. Punch is being charged up by both of these Doom Fists. As he finds the hit on the Smurf. Again, the Fortify ready. He doesn't go flying back. Doesn't playing up around the side. Gets greeted with a bowler. The Accretion finds the connection. There's no capitalization on Godsby, so he's still in the fight. Gets topped up. Continues to spray away the shotguns. But Sinatra. Moves down Bazzi now. And that could be the opening here for the Shock to get on the board first. He just pushing up on top of Gushui. He is completely surrounded. Will be eliminated. Sinatra gets the healing coming through. Violet hoses down two with the coalescence. And that will be shot grabbing the point first here in downtown. That's a heavy commitment, that coalescence there from Violet, but it does guarantee that there's no way, even with a stray pick off on the chase there, that Hangzhou Spark could turn it with their coalescence. They do have that still, of course, from Bebe here, and they are going to have the ability to re-engage with Sound Barrier. So this is actually not a free defense here for the Shock. They need to be very careful. Striker overextending a little bit, has to use his Wraith Walk, and that could be the go button here for the Spark as they commit in. Well, that's gonna be punch for punch. Hulk coming in, Sinatra, everybody just collapses on top of him. She finds that final blow as the Coalescence rolls for Bebe. Trying to keep his DPS top up. Sinatra will be respawning now, can rejoin the Spark, still have not yet made their way over to the point, but now Smurf going down. It's gonna be catastrophic for them on this defense. The flip will just come through the rest of the shot and be peeling back, it would seem. Great. Get a couple more shots in. Striker just buying a little bit of percentage here. Yeah. Great re-engage there from the Spark. They see Striker is up there hiding. It's a very common place for a Reaper to be. He gets caught, has to Wraith Walk, so doesn't have that defensive escape. And Hangzhou Spark realized we've got Coalescence. There's almost no way we can win this fight. Shock's overextended, and we have a Sound Barrier. They didn't have to use it. They get to hold it here. And now this the pendulum has swung absolutely in Spark's favor here. Several ultimates ready to go for both sides. That's gonna be the Gravitic Flux tossed in. Looking for a pick, but not gonna be able to find it. Great sound barrier there from Moth as per usual. Gushway gonna be taken down. The show Hillman uses his ultimate, the Death Blossom in it. Sinatra manages to find the triple kill with the Meteor Strike. And that is gonna be the flip coming through back in favor of the Shock, not even, even allowing the Spark to take a lead. IDK didn't use his sound barrier early in the fight because he wanted to wait for Joy Odin's Gravitic Flux here. When the Flux goes off, the barrier is used, but there's just not enough to stop the follow-up Meteor Strike here. And the positional advantage was there for the Shock because IDK had to hold onto that sound barrier for so long. Yeah, the Supercharger being used by Smurf. Buffing up that damage, and it's doing wonders for them already. And Sinatra and Striker manage to find kills. Get into position. And Gushway taken down. Chuck maintaining control of the point for the moment. Now at 70%. Spark so gonna have to make their way over there quite shortly. They have the Supercharger, and that's going to be really powerful to engage with this Death Blossom if Godsby can find an angle. Much easier said than done, and the teleport he's going to have to use, if it gets predicted, this might just be Shock tying us up here on control. He's actually playing passively now with the team. All the way together, get a bit of damage in. He's gonna try to, well, it looks like he's gonna jump on the high ground. They're just gonna commit it now, on the point. Supercharger yeah. gonna be tossed in. Death Blossom is out on the stairwell. Godspeed going lower and lower, trying to dance around that barrier. Manages to do so, stays alive. 
Now Sinatra gone as well as Trey Hillman. Down two members to flip back in for the Spark. Shock making the 99%. They have a bit of time on their side, but they have to let this go. This is still advantage Shock because they have a sound barrier coming online. They're going to have Gravitic Flux. Godsby just used his Death Blossom, and they're at 99 to 45 here. So all they need to do is play a little bit passively and build that ult advantage. For the first time in this map, the Spark will actually have to be the aggressors. They're going to have to look for these defensive opening picks. Otherwise, they're just going to get out ulted here. Godsby taking down Sinatra. Again, coming up clutch. Is that going to be enough for them, though? Coalesce, it's currently rolling on the side of the Spark. Rhea's got the Gravitic Flux ready to go as well. Meteor Slam out, fade away from Bebe, keeps himself alive, but Gushway's in the corner, he's going lower and lower. The Flux comes in, but the beat is there to meet it. Moth trying to keep his team topped up. A bit of a back and forth, this Bazzi and Sinatra both buying picks, but one is on to the other. So now there's no Doomfist in the fight, the punch is there as well as the cool essence from Violet to take down IDK. Healing severely limited for the side of the Spark, the Shock managed to find the flip back into their favor, someone's got to tag the ploy. Just managed to do so right here, last second. Rhea's gonna be taken down as is Gushway, who rejoins with the Wrecking Ball. He just strike from Bazzi, unable to find anything. He gets booted over to the side, finished off by Sinatra. It seems like it will just be a matter of time as the OT bleeds away. Gravitic Flux takes Fede up into the air. He'll fade over to the side, taken down in the end, and it will be one more round to settle the first map of this series. Hangzhou Spark, their risk-aversive playstyle, playing almost as if they have a exact set plan for every single ultimate means that IDK is uncharacteristically missing some of these sound barriers, and it feels like the adaptability for the Spark isn't there compared to, to Shock here. The Spark is struggling in some of these team fights where they have to play against the grain of their own playstyle. They have to be more aggressive in these situations with the down on ultimates, and then that last fight, they played passive, Sinatra gets the first pick, and then it's just, it's not winnable from there when Shock has all the ults and you've got none. You can't turn a 5v6 like that. They needed to be the ones to get the first kill, and that lack of aggression could be a problem going deeper into this series. We'll see these teleporters out. The MTP going through by their side. The Reaper and the Doomfist, both enough mobility. Does not so much matter which damage player is using that Symmetra teleport at the beginning? Exactly. They both catch up. Here's Sinatra coming in with a flank, but the punch expires. He gets stunned up. Leaps out. And that seismic slam. Charges up another one. Sees the Fortify expire. Just wait. Tag the low down to about half HP. The uppercut connects on the two, but Sinatra just can't quite kill anyone off. Drop down here onto the point. First from the spark, get the barrier set up. Godby's comes flank. Through, he's on the flank. Pulls down to half HP and Gushway. He gets isolated and eliminated. Sinatra catches him off with that uppercut. Bazzi gonna have to try to turn things around if they want to cap this first, but it seems like it's not gonna happen. Rhea off the side. Both support's gonna be eliminated. Bazzi likely staggered here at the end. That was actually a really cool idea for Godspeed because he waited for them to drop down. He was behind them, but unfortunately Bazzi got picked right away as Godspeed tried to commit in. He had to Wraith Walk and the Shock get the first fight win here. And now they get to use their ults defensively here in these chokes. Mecha base is such a problem for that. Coalescence out. As they exit the hallway, now going to be matched by Bebe using one of his own. Meteor Strike, everybody's bottled up here. Not going to be able to find the kills, though. AK falling low. Meteor Strike out from Bazzi, saves his life with that one. A massive seismic slam comes in from Sinatra, turns around and gets from Bazzi as he hits the ground. Smurf, however, is the cost. Next punch from Sinatra, not going to hit. Has to exit to the point, but Rhea is there, hounding him down. Gravig Flux out from Trey Hillman. Slams him down, but doesn't find any kills. And the sound barrier goes through from IDK as well as Moth. It's still going to be a trade-up in favor of the Spark. We hope it falling lower and lower. Rhea going around the back, sees him. He's in the corner, will be eliminated. Spark, however, still have not made their way over to the point, have not gotten this they flip back through. They need this flip. They need the flip right now. They're going to have to commit this. Godsby's going to have to use it. Oh. Gets pooped back, but doesn't go off the side of the map. It's a nice angle, tries to go for the supercharger, takes a little bit too much damage, has to use the Wraith walkout. Bazzi gets taken down by Sinatra yet again. Smurf up into the air, being focused fired. Slammed down by the Gravitic Flux, will fall. You can see the cleanup coming in on the back of the Death Blossom there from Godsby. Spark have finally found the fight. Troy Hillman had to rejoin here with the Wrecking Ball. Buys a little bit more time. They'll make their way up to 75, 76%. This is great for the Shock in terms of control meter build because they forced the Spark to use so many ultimates and they got the meter up to 75%. But they did have to swap a few heroes around. We saw the Wrecking Ball for just a moment. So Troy Hillman, you know, all the resets coming through in terms of the tank line here. But Essentially, the Spark need to be more efficient with ultimates now. And it's a big problem on this map, Mecha Base. Yep. Playing right up here near the front. Supercharger still rolling, nearly taken down, but they can't quite find it. 
Instead, it's just going to be the Spark quite handily winning the follow-up fight. This is the neutral fight they needed to win Ultless in order to turn the tides. Now IDK has a sound barrier. You know, they can make, they can use that to make the next team fight in their favor if the shot commit in. And that's one of those big ultimates you really need. Moth's going to take some time to get his here. All the Spark need to do is make sure they don't get anyone stray picked, you know? If Sinatra gets a solo pick, a rocket punch kill, that's all the Shock need to take this first map. Already, a lot of damage here onto the Shock as they try to exit and Violet going to be taken down. Very nice punch there from Bazzi and Sinatra going to be forced to use the Meteor Strike. Can they find anything? The hold is huge! Sinatra gets a triple kill! They might just turn this one around right now and they have! Sinatra, absolutely massive. The play set up by Smart. They're right back over onto the point. The Spark could only get 11% away. Now Shock back in control. They turn it around completely on its head. IDK keeping the sound barrier here. They did not want to commit it in that fight. They're going to try to turn this around now. The Shock, though, only really using that Meteor Strike. This fight is probably going to determine this map. They're coming in with a speed boost. Barrier's ready. Blossom as well is set to go here for Striker. Right, going to be down. He is taking a lot of damage to Coalesce. It's coming in from Bebe, trying to find the kill. Gravitic Flux into the back, manages to find one. It's going to be Striker, but he's got that sound barrier out from Moth yet again. IDK now going to be matching. A bit still has that Gravitic Flux. They're not going to have the defensive ultimate. Into the back, goes Striker, tries to use the Death Blossom, and usually will fall. Answering Blossom out from Godspeed. The focus fire is there from the Shock. They finish him off. The barriers are crumbling, as is his attack from the Spark. San Francisco Shock will persevere. They hold them back. Now that OT will bleed away, and they will start this series off 1-0. Very hard-fought win here for the Shock. The Kinetic Grasp, great there for Choyobin in the end to absorb Bazzi's Death Blossom, and that will turn this map into their favor. It was hard-fought, and I think we're in for a great series here. Looks that way. Hangzhou Spark gonna have their map choice as we get ready to move into hybrid. We'll see if that'll be enough for them to tie up this series. Try to take us a distance. Game seven, potentially. We'll find out after game two. The Overwatch League is powered by Intel. Game, record, stream without compromise on Intel Core i7. Omen, the official PC and display of the Overwatch League. And by ZipChair Gaming, the official chair supplier of the Overwatch League. The most memorable moment would probably be beating Shock this season. That was like such a good experience. It made me like really, really happy. That's right, there's a big shatter! Oh, they did it again! It's crazy because we were such a big underdog. The Houston Outlaws defeat the San Francisco Shock. My old team, I'm good friends with like literally everyone on the team. So I was just happy playing against them and then winning just made it like the best experience ever.
That is right, Grand Finals coming up in just a couple of weeks on September 29th at the Wells Fargo Center in Philadelphia. We already have one team qualified. Just yesterday, the Vancouver Titans earned their way to that Grand Final. They will look to take the 2019 season for themselves, but these two teams still fighting, still in it. Have to win here today, then have a very quick turnover into a match tomorrow versus the NYXL winner of that will go up against the Titans in Philadelphia. Yeah. Right now, the Shock, you know, they've played a lot of tense series all throughout this year, and they have more experience than the Hangzhou Spark in moments like these, the do or die moments, the elimination matches, right? They went to every single stage finals this year. So for the Spark, they really have to make sure their mentality does not get shattered here as they fall a few maps. Only the one for now, as we head into King's Row, their map choice, this is the one that you really need to turn it around. When everyone was asking me for my predictions on this, I couldn't really give a straight answer, but I felt like if the Spark were to take this series, it would have to be one-sided in their favor, because the longer the series go, goes, rather, the San Francisco Shock, they just have that advantage. They have that endurance. And sure, they ended up falling in that final map to Atlanta, but we all know the circumstances around that final moment yeah and for the shock here this is everything this is the finals they were destined for they have two series left to get there the massive favorites coming into this one if they take this second win i feel like things for the spark could fall apart very quickly Momentum it will be is absolutely huge yeah and they will be falling uh, on the defensive side here as we go into our second map Three. going to be Six the mirror points. again One. Very interesting choice of King's Row here versus the Shock of a positive record. The Spark have not looked that great on it. Granted, a lot of those games going to be in the 3-3 meta where they did not excel. So let's see how they fare now. You see Violet already falling low. Going to be using that healing orb to keep himself topped up. Trying to get that Coalescence online. He's surging ahead of Bebe right now. 50% already built up for him. And Sinatra goes in, but the boulder just grates him. But it's both Doomfist Look great and out. though. The flank is good. That's becomes in, does manage to find Smurf, taking him down. And that should be enough time walk here for the side of the Spark. That was... Get Mazzy back into the fight. Pure reaction by Rhea, by the way. If you look back at what Sinatra just did there, he made it look like he was going to go through the hotel and go for that flank, and then he went straight down the middle. So it was very tricky, the fake he put there. And now Violet picked off. Have to remember uh, that primary fire from Rhea can bounce around corners. You might think that you're safe, but... And Be the Shock. extra careful with your positioning now. This. Captain Final was telling me, you know, he has this cool stat where the Shock, if they lose Violet on Mora or Moth on the Lucio, they have won zero team fights in that situation, but it's mostly because they retreat like they did there. The less it's out from Violet now, baby. to be using his as well. Find Striker into the back line. So many people on the side of the Spark. A ton of damage here, baby. Doing his best to try to keep them topped up, but he just can't quite get to everyone. Bassy going to be picked off again. Sinatra finds that kill. Already two ticks going to be going over to the side of the shock. The Spark have to move their way over onto the point. Gravitic Flux comes in, manages to find two. Violet, however, faded out of it, lands on the high ground, and does not get taken down. In the meantime, Sinatra is absolutely devastating the roster of the Spark. Four kills go to his Doomfist. He's looking for more, but Striker says, nah, that one's mine. And this is one of those moments, too, for Rhea, where you made a tough call. You committed to the Gravitic Flux. You knew they didn't have sound barrier but you come up empty. The only hero you're able to focus to sub half health is Violet, who has the escape. And after the flux is over here, as Sinatra narrowly avoids there, then it's all easy cleanup from there. And that's a huge ultimate loss. That kind of gravitic flux usage just might get into your head, your mentality. Remember, no one's come back from an 0-2 start here in postseason. This could be the spark falling into that same vein. See them pushing up, trying to regain control of the card here just outside of the archway, but into the back comes Striker! He's got the Death Blossom, and he's tearing up the Spark! A double kill plus the Supercharger to boot! And that should just be the Shock able to roll through. Striker and Sinatra fill the kill feed. And more ultimates getting no value here. We have to talk about the sound barrier. It was way too late, but yet still committed there, and hopes perhaps that Godsby would live through and have the second Death Blossom there to try to turn that fight around. They had almost the seismic slam ready there, you know, the meter strike rather, for Bazzi. They might have been able to turn it around, but it's just too late. That's another missed sound barrier from IDK. Spark feel like the plane's scared here a little bit. Yep. Coalescence out. Bebe again coming in second with that. Doesn't quite have line of sight on some of these members. Meter strike is in. He doesn't have the mobility. He can't fade out. 
now just gets picked off. To be fair, on King's Row here in our postseason in this meta, attacking teams have steamrolled this point. It has been almost universal across every series we've seen. Attacking teams steamrolls a point. It's really the C defense yeah. where teams have held and depleted that time bank. So let's not get ahead of ourselves here. Even though it's four and a half minutes, the Sparks certainly have a chance to turn this around, but they've used so many critical ultimates, they've been wasted. And that's a big problem because those are the tools they wish they had right now for that final moment where the card is normally being held. They don't have the Coalescence. They don't have that sound barrier that IDK wasted previously. Striker trying to build up that next death blossom. Not to be quite far behind. Grecian from Rhea, unable to find a hit, so no stuns coming through. Great form going to be used. Striker's feeling his way back. It's an absolutely huge Gravitic Flux out from Choi Hyobin. And Striker is there for the alley. He begins the death blossom in for a triple kill for a bit more here on the back end. You can see Bebe retreating all the way back into the spot. You're talking he, about draining the time bank here. I don't know if it's going to happen doesn't for Doesn't look like it. He pulls the supports away. Then the Death Blossom is great. IDK doesn't have the barrier yet. Supercharger is in. Coalescence coming out now from Bebe and Gushue already picked off. he has got that Gravitic Flux, but he needs to get into a position to use it, but no one can contest the card. The Flux come in, comes in at the last second, but the shock just rolled through. Three minutes and 36 seconds at the end of King's Row. There's no stopping the shock right now. It's a great time bank here. We'll see if the Spark can have a similar tear on the attack. We're seeing so many great attack runs on King's Row. So Spark fans don't lose hope yet, but the ult usage here has been a big question for the Spark. Well, the Spark now getting ready to go on the attack. Let's see how they fare when we come back to their half. Support your team with the official Overwatch League Coca-Cola bottles at CokeStore.com. Ships to all 50 U.S. states, Washington, D.C., and U.S. P.O. boxes. Welcome back, Hangzhou Spark, unable to stave off the onslaught of the San Francisco Shock here on King's Row. They make it to the end with three minutes and 36 seconds remaining. Now a Spark get ready to go on their own attack. This is a this is a make or break moment for the Spark. And I know I'm talking about mentality a lot, and it's not something we discuss a ton in competitive esports because you think about players' mechanical skill, you think about macro, you think about strategy. But oftentimes for these rookie players, when they enter this scenario against veterans who have been in this place so many times, the Shock have, they're the favorites. And you lose a defense like the one we just saw. You fail a few old combos. You find yourself facing a 336 time bank. When everyone's felt it in their ranked games where you know, you probably even had a teammate disconnect because he just couldn't handle it. You know, you see that King's Row finish at 336. You've got to keep your mentality straight in a moment like this. If they, for example, get full held here, that is going to have serious impl implications for the rest of this series. Let's not get ahead of ourselves, though. They've got a great opportunity to mirror this time bank. We'll see if they can get an opening pick here on this attack. The ults have not been going well for the Spark. It's been more of the neutral fights that are going in their favor. It's all right there, Striker not dying. See how he fares now that he's on the defense. 
Spark just seemingly unable to punish the enemy Reaper. Led to those eight Death Blossom kills. Looking forward right now. Barrier's coming out. They get the hold in. Look for the punch. Uppercut goes forward onto Smurf. But he's still going to be quite healthy. As the Spark have to retreat, several members going to be falling low. Kutra will be taken down. And he manages to find one. Striker, his first death on the map. Coming at the hands of Lucio. Yeah. Great kill there, but can they convert it into anything here? The Doomfist position, he doesn't get the punch kill. And that's on cooldown for a bit here. The Spark are going to have to regroup. Coalescence available for both Moiras. Ranatra unable to find the rocket punch. We'll have that all cooldown quite shortly. A bit of damage, Kaisa's way back over towards the hotel. Does he want to punch in towards the Coalescence? Thinks better of it. Pulls back towards the archway. Spark now on the point, gain a tick for free. A lot of damage in, Smurf gonna be taken down. IDK finds another frag. Punch coming out, Sinatra straight into the statue. Gravitic Flux is there, but Bazzi responds to the Meteor Strike. It's a lot of damage on the Moth. Finishes him off with a rocket punch. You can see the rest of the shock pulled back around inside the hotel. Punch on the Violet will finish him off. Bazzi gets both supports. That was, and that will be the cap. Five minutes plus here for the Spark. Despite the capture, that was such a great round from Sinatra. He was able to buy a ton of time. He played around Bebe's Coalescence extremely well there after using his Rocket Punch, survived, bought for the time. Meteor Strike, there's always a liability when there's a Doomfist on the other side. They can just predict where you're going to land and then instantly blow you up. But he bought a lot of time, and for the Shock, with their great time make, you feel pretty good about that here on King's Row. In terms of ultimates here, IDK had to use the sound barriers. The Shock have a great advantage here in this upcoming fight where they could really stop the momentum that we've seen so much on King's Row in this postseason. Godspeed, man in the high ground. The striker away. Nice to go back here with the rest of the team play on the card. Death Blossom is ready to go. Does he want to go for a team play? It's going to be the question. Oh, he's not going to get the chance. Sinatra shuts him down. He's taking your execution there. Now Bazzy gone as well. That is going to be card control game for the Shock. Yeah, he gets to keep the ultimate. Godspeed does. It wasn't an interrupt. It wasn't a wasted ultimate there. But the focus is definitely on him right now for the Shock because if they can kill him oh, man. in the middle of his Death Blossom, if they can execute him before he can use it, they get to keep that sound bear and they get to hold that advantage. The ults are coming through here for the Spark, but the Shock have positional advantage. They're getting these first picks. They're playing aggressive, and that is really paying off. If Sinatra can make this happen even one more time, they've basically got themselves a guaranteed better time bank. 11 and 2 for Sinatra right now on the Doomfist. For another punch setup. So it's going to whip a little bit. The Blossom comes out from both of these Reapers, but it's going to be God's be taken down. Sinatra with the Meteor Strike gets rid of IDK. Didn't have the sound barrier to try to survive. Vidic Flux still going to be used by Rhea, but he just can't do anything. I mean, what was that flux? What was that flux? Somebody I, tell me, what was that flux? Uh, Everyone is dead. The fight is over. I would Rhea think commits. He commits the Gravitic Flux. The ult usage here for the Spark may cost them this series if they can't get their heads straight here and come into these fights. Like, we have to call that flux out. What was that? Let's watch this again. <laughs> Two dead. Oh, we're going to take a look. See, inside. The hotel was trying to catch them, I guess, as they were exiting the choke, but then... He's not even looking! As, as soon as he's using the ultimate, he can't use the kinetic grasp. He can't absorb the damage from Striker, so he just gets picked off. Now the Gravitic Flux comes into the choke, out from the side of Choi Hyobin. Catches several members. The sound barrier comes out from IDK. Sinatra will fall. Left out the dry. A lot of good flanking coming through from the Spark right now, trying to pull the attention away from the front lines. That allows them to break through for the moment. But you're falling low. Meteor Strike out from Bazzi. Looking for a safe place to drop in. So he have to keep himself safe with the barrier. He's got to exit with a rocket punch. The cart just now getting ready to roll up to where it previously was. Kills continue to be found for the side of the Sparks. So they can finally get moving. But the time bank has suffered drastically. That was a really great reactionary sound barrier from IDK. Someone who's missed a few of those in these first two maps. Two Choi Hoban's Flux. Now he's going to have another one in 20%. Rhea stands at the exact same percentage here. But finally, the cart gets moving here. And it's hard to be a defensive Doomfist here on King's Row because you have to fight into these corners where the cart is rolling. So the Shock just being passive here. They may use the Meteor Strike to contest. They have that opportunity. They are moving their way up. Striker taking a lot of damage on that approach. Coalescence comes in as they hold them together. But Sinatra finds the first pick. His Godspeed gets taken down. But Moth is now gone. Sound Barrier not going to be in this fight. Bazzi finds another one. It's for the Sinatra on the back end of that Meteor Strike. And now we'll find Striker as well. As he popping off here at the last stretch of point B. Trying to pop.
punch smurf off the card. Fortify buys him a little bit more time, but Rhea will have to clean up. And finally will be able to roll through, but they're already nearly a minute down on the shock. That's why you see that Fortify used like that. You know, Smurf is absolutely good to take the stagger here as the defensive team when you already have the better time bank. This is a time by game right now, so we're gonna watch Vazzy come in. This is the 3K again. But the shock, all they want to do right now is just delay, delay, delay. Probably see the mate come out, the wrecking ball, things like this. And Blossom is out, sound barriers there from IDK. Bazzy with a meteor strike gets rid of Violet. Lose out on Rhea, now God's be gonna fall as well, so a costly loss in the fight for the side of the Spark. This is the difference between these two teams stylistically. The Shock are not afraid to be aggressive. They're not afraid to walk up to the cart and commit ultimates here. To potentially not just deplete this time bank, but win the map. Take these fights down on ultimates, be aggressive, and play into the fact that the Spark are not using their ultimates in conjunction with each other correctly. Momentum is absolutely in their favor. Okay, well that's gonna be huge. IDK comes up clutch again. Takes down Sinatra. Can they convert this? So they're gonna be looking for Godspeed's got that Death Blossom ready to go. He's he got has a couple teleports. options. Destroy Steve Beeman! Oh no my way. god! Boss! He goes in deep! Gets the poop! Sends two of them over the side! Absolutely huge! And just like that, the momentum is gone! I mean, they're just not afraid of anything! The shock! No fear! Committing in! Down a member! The poop kill comes through! Looking for the teleport, looking for anything! Godsby! In that moment, Meteor just eliminated. Right. Now look at where the, the Shock are playing. They're not playing around the back corner. They're not playing around the point. They're playing for the win here. They're trying to get stagger kills. Godsby still has that Death Blossom, but Sinatra's just waiting to blow him up the second he peeks around the corner. They have no idea he's oh here. Oh my god, how have they not spotted him? Gets the punch there, and Bassy taken down. Smurf has the shots. Now Meteor Strike chasing them all the way back towards the spawn. Rhea tries to keep himself protected with the barrier. Sinatra barely making it out. No, he will get cut down. But they're still so far away from the cart with 45 seconds remaining. This is going to be an OT finish no matter what. And then they're just playing for a draw. Lux is out. Trying to make it happen. Death Blossom comes in from Striker. Doesn't find anything, but seems like he may just be able to make it out safely. Shock sounding their retreat, starting to pull their way back over behind the corner. They have That's a huge the ult advantage. They have a huge ult advantage. This needs to be the push. They need to wipe here, or this map is going to the Shock. Forget time bank. Halted in front. Sinatra finds a pick. Bebe going to be taken down further, delaying that next coalescence. Sound barrier. It's so late. The fight. That Blossom is there for Godspeed. He manages the fight too. The Shock. Big plays here. And they start advancing, but there's 12 seconds left to go. They're still the Genji so far swap. away from the end. The Genji swap for the delay. He's actually going to swap over to Bastion. If they get the overtime draw, is worst case scenario, and it looks like they will. Vazzy waiting. Yep, will not be able to make it in with time in the bank. They see the TP on Striker. As he dropping down, sound barrier is out. You can see Uppercut trying to isolate Violet, but doesn't have the damage to pick him off through the shield. Meteor Strike now over to the side. See Sinatra, they get the setup on the Meteor Strike. He takes him off. Now, Rocket Punch in. Striker going to be gone. Violet taken down. Spark. May very well be able to finish this map just yet. It seems like they will. They get the wipe. They will roll through. But because there's no time in the bank, they're playing for a draw now on King's Row. Yeah, drawable, as they say. Hangzhou Spark using their ultimates there at the final hour to complete the map. But Shock played aggressive. They played forward. It's win-win. You lose the fight, you buy time. You win the fight, you could just win the map. They get the draw scenario. So worst case scenario, after this map, they'll still be up 1-0. Well, they have to hold them off for three and a half minutes to defend the single tick on A. Let's see if they can pull it off when we come back. Here we go. And for the long haul now are the Spark with this defense. Cannot afford any losses, any unnecessary deaths. We saw how quickly the Shock were able to take point A last time around. Yep. Now they have to hold them back for three minutes and 36 seconds to force a draw. This is gonna play well into their play style though, playing very defensively, playing very reactionarily. And they were able to catch Sinatra on his first attempt to get that punch in last time. He's already used his trick, the fake out to the left. See if he does it again. Oh. 
with the Hulk in. He's just going to be canceling that punch. They see Pazzy coming into the back line. He's trying to get a setup on the Hammond's head. Major uppercut goes in. Massive damage. Can't kill him off, and Smurf will get picked. Pazzy. Keeping him in this for now. Sinatra goes in deep, and Pazzy cuts him down. Rocket Punch was ready. Godsby will be eliminated, but it's just nothing but Bazzy here for the side of the spark picking up these kills. Obviously, the, the rest of the team contributing. Remember the miracle push on Numbani. We saw from the Hangzhou spark against the Atlanta Rain. One minute to finish the whole map. Yep. They might have the miracle defense here again as well. And that was really great reactionary play from Bazzy. Again, playing the defensive Doomfist, punching second. Coalescence here, first for Violet, they're reacting second again. Yeah, Bebe using it, but Rhea, under so much pressure, as has got the point topped up. The ball is so low, the point nearly capped, the sound barrier has to be used by IDK. They need to win the fight right now. Striker gonna be taken down, Bazzi comes up with another one. Grisha not gonna be able to find anything. Gravitic Flux is out, and already two members gonna be gone. Sinatra fighting for the town, Bazzi with the Meteor Strike and Mock out IDK. Rhea takes down one, Gravitic Flux finishes off Smurf. Violet playing forward, he looks for the sun, is unable to find it, but still, Keeps that Moira zone back. Now Troy Hillman gonna be gone. And they cannot play forward. They got so close to capping it there. But Hunter Spark, they hold them back for a little bit longer. And this is the defensive ult usage we've been waiting for for the Spark. They've been using them so well in these final moments, waiting till the last second. But now they're down the support ultimates here. Moth is gonna have the sound barrier. Godsby waiting to try to pick him first. Little down, not oh. checking the angles. And Godsby shuts them down. Death Blossom out, Striker trying to stay alive, will TP back into the spawn, and they just don't have the damage. Will spread a bit too wide there to finish off Violet. But it's huge. Really make this happen. They've already taken two minutes off the time. It's huge that they're able to do this with just one ultimate as well. Right now, for the Shock, they still hold the ult advantage, but the Spark are being as efficient as possible. Now Bazzi, waiting similarly here on the flank, hoping the Shock once again don't check both ways before they touch this point. Coalescence is out from Violet, Bebe reacts. Dives in, looks for the tank line, finds Troy Hoven, knocks him into the back. Now Barrier comes out, it's too that much! just be it! Bazzi only gets a supercharger with a Meteor Strike, and now he's got no HP. The point is open for the Shock, and they will take it! Spark making it look like maybe it was possible, but the Shock get it with over a minute remaining, now up 2-0 in this series. A Valiant hold, but once again, the Shock just simply hold ultimates, use them together there, and they're able to finish this one out. Two maps away now from taking that step to New York. They're so close to a Grand Finals, they can almost taste it. And this may be another one-sided series. Halfway there, let's see if they close this out or if the Spark can finally answer back. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile, now connecting 99% of Overwatch League fans. Catch your league on America's network, T-Mobile. State Farm, whatever life brings your way, State Farm is here to help life go right. Xfinity, Xfinity X5 gives you the speed you need to game like a pro. And by Toyota, official North American partner of the Overwatch League. Toyota, let's go places. Hey, man, what's up? You need anything for today? Nah, man, I think I'm set. Big day today, man? Yeah, huge. Let's play some Overwatch.
the Shaka are perfect. 3-0 versus the Spark this season. And they're already putting on a clinic so far in this one. It's the Shaka 2-0 over the Spark coming into the break. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Halftime, presented by Cheesy Grooves. Malik here. The whole crew is with me. Zoe, Print, and Sideshow. We talked about this matchup, guys. The San Francisco Shock haven't dropped one to the Hangzhou Spark. And though this match has been close, the Spark have been performing a little better. Same result so far. Shock still dominant. Yeah, they look a little bit rattled, honestly. I mean, coming <laughs> into this game, the Spark should have that drive to win, the championship mentality. They need to take out the third seed, the second seed, then the first seed if they want to win. At the moment, they look a bit rattled. Alts all over the it place. It was okay, though, in the first map. I do feel like on yep. control, they looked a lot stronger. Uh, but yeah, their, their alt usage has been uh, questionable at best on King's Row. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you, Zoe, because uh, at Busan, it was the Hanjo Spark who came out and dealt the first blow. They looked like they were ready to play when they came out. And then things gradually flipped over to the San Francisco Shock's favor as we went on, on the back of Sinatra's Doomfist. Yeah, the initial round started going the way of Hangzhou, but I, I do wonder how much of this was actually just because Sinatra took a while to warm up a little bit. The opening rounds, he didn't really get the opening picks that he needed. He wasn't creating as much space so the striker could really dominate. Uh, and Hangzhou Spark obviously capitalized off that. But the next two following subsequent rounds were very one-sided towards the San Francisco Shock in terms of the way they were playing. I mean, this as well. Uh, the old usage that we were talking about, this is problematic. IDK is a little bit too early with this sound barrier, and it allows the San Francisco Shock to just open up with a 3K for Sinatra, just combining the Flux and the Meteor Strike. And this was countless examples. We can pull this up as well, as we'll see in the King's Row highlights on shore as well. Uh, but the Shock are really starting to come online. And this is something that I've been mulling over in my head, but this seems like a perfect meta for Sinatra. This guy's been under constant pressure for throughout all of last season, all of this season. And he's the perfect candidate for somebody who can really just clutch when we're in a very important meta where Doomfist players need to be getting these picks. Yeah, I, I, I honestly love it. The, the Shock have finally found their style, the way that they want to play with Sinatra playing this incredibly aggressive style. Uh, and for the Hangzhou Spark, they've really got to focus on shutting him down. So I've got an Insights Power by Intel where I want to run through some of the ways in which Sinatra has been playing incredibly aggressively and break down his style. So if we take a look at Sinatra, even just right at the beginning of this opening third round, goes in, he's using his cooldowns really early, trusting his team that he's going to be backed up in a lot of these scenarios. And also what I want to point out is that he's working off this shield usage a lot. The more that he can get in and use the halts to be able to, to get extra uppercuts. I mean, look at how many shields he's been able to regen over and over again, going back in, getting another 100 shields, punishing Vazzy once more. But these are the instances where he gets punished in the first round. And this is what the Hangzhou Spark need to focus on again. Sinatra over chases. And let's take a look at this from Rhea's point of view, because they notice that Sinatra is getting a bit too aggressive. And as it comes up, you see the Halt here and the Rock combo beautifully together to be able to punish a Doomfist that's getting away with way too much right now. <laughs> Again, another great way of blocking a punch is to counter punch. You counter punch only a small amount within the confines of your own team. That means that Sinatra's gonna fall right where the rest of your team can clean him up. That's what the Spark needs to be focusing on. Sinatra's getting away with way too much. Way too much for a Doomfist. And that was a heads up play by Bassy to counter punch. I wanna see more of that because when we moved on to King's Row, it went back to being a lot more of the same with Sinatra kind of just doing whatever he felt was necessary to win the match. Honestly, Honestly ridiculous. It, it, yeah. What, what do you say? They, they completed an <laughs> unbelievable <laughs> record time. It was a slapping. I know. Uh, and this is, the, this is the scary thing about the San Francisco shock that we've been saying the entire time is that they've now found their footing in this meta. They're in this lower bracket, the loser's bracket. All this pressure being on their shoulders right now in terms of if they lose one game, they're out. And we were a little bit worried for them to begin with. But now they're finally finding their style. They're finally finding their footing. And it seems like they have this effect on teams they play against. Because I've seen this multiple times now. I saw when they played against the Gladiators. The yeah. Gladiators didn't play their own game. Now we're seeing against the Spark. Bazzi is not having the performance he needs to try and shut down Sinatra. Like you said, Josh, he's getting away with murder. And the Shock are really excelling in this environment. I mean, we saw a record pace from it's them. It's odd, though, because it's not like Sinatra is coming from a weird kind of angle. It's pretty much a head-on, like, going straight for the front lines there. Um, you would think by now, Spark should have figured that out because this is what uh, basically Shock has been doing for the past few games. However, they're not really playing into that, or against that, rather. They're still trying to go for flanks themselves, and then they have nothing to actually protect their front line as well as their back line because their, their DPS players are 
wherever. Yeah, we've yeah. seen Spark make adaptations in previous games, though. You think back to the their run through the lower bracket, they've been able to adapt to teams and, and have those crucial maneuvers that they need to be able to get back in the game. So I'm sure the coaches will be talking to them in the half about some of these things. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what they do moving forward. Because one of these teams is going home today, and you know what that means. It's Crunch Time presented by Cheez It Grooves. Now, we touched on a little bit about the Shock's versatility at the damage roll earlier, and one player who's been standing out specifically for San Francisco is Rascal, especially when he's freezing the opposition on May. Yeah, his May is phenomenal. He's uh, been one of those standout players who just plays her in such an incredible, in aggressive way, but still very team-oriented, as his uh, barriers are on point, his walls, that is. Now, um, he's usually coming out for the Shock, or at least has been in the playoffs for uh, more of the escort maps. I think we've yeah. seen him on every single one of them. And that was mainly to counter those Bastion comps. And so far, that's been working out fantastic. Yeah, it's yeah. not just a Bastion, though, that he brings to the team as well. It's the Farah comps that he really can excel at on a lot of these escort maps. I mean, whether they go to Rialto or whatnot, it doesn't really matter. You can start playing that hero on a variety of stuff. But look here, I mean, he's leading categories in so many ways when it comes to the, the May as a hero. He is probably one of our best players that we've seen this year, honestly. Uh, a guy who has had, had his ups and downs, honestly, throughout his entire competitive career over the last oh, yeah. few years. Yeah. He's found a home on the shock, and he's excelling in the roles that they put him in. And what that means is this next map coming up is going to be the most pivotal map of the entire series. Because when Rascal comes in for Escort, like you were saying, Zoe, they are going to be favored on that mode, in my opinion. Even though uh, the, the Spark have been looking good on Escort, Rascal and Architect are just so, so strong. So indeed. this next map coming up is going to decide the whole series, whether Spark can take it or not. Indeed, indeed. And guys, that was Crunch Time presented by Cheese It Grooves. While we're on the subject, though, of the next map, we got an Assault map coming up. If you're the Hondro Spark, you're down 0-2. What do you do to bounce back against the San Francisco Shock? Where do you take them? You take them to Horizon. Like, what do you do at this point? I think Horizon is probably the best comfort pick for them, but it's hard to say. I mean, the Shock are playing on another level right now. What is it? Anubis. Tell me, I can see you peeking. Looks like it. Looks <laughs> I peeked into yeah. my monitor so and the monitor it. says it's Anubis. Temple of Anubis <laughs> is the map that we're going to be seeing then. So okay. the Spark seem to think they can take him onto that map. It is a map that favors a lot of Doomfist play as well. Yeah. Which, I mean, it's quite unusual when you're seeing the, the performance that Sinatra's playing. I got to put it into perspective, though, right now. We've never seen a team come back from a 0-2 at this point. Yeah. We've also never seen a team, uh, with the exception, actually, of, uh, of Gladiators, win the first map and then go on to win the series. When right. teams do that, I think out of every single game in the playoffs so far, with the exception of one game, the team that wins the first control map goes on to win the entire series. If the Hangzhou Spark do it, it will be ridiculous, historical. Yeah. I don't think we'll ever see anything like it again. Yeah. Well, the Hondro Spark are in bad need of a map win. If they want to keep their grand finals hopes alive, it is 2-0 San Francisco Shock. We can see if the Spark can get back into this game when we come back after the break. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Cheez-It Grooves. Deep flavor, deep crunch. It's a mind crunch.
Welcome to Assist of the Week, presented by State Farm. The Titans were all tied up against the Soul Dynasty on Map 3, trying to hold out on Horizon Lunar Colony against the Titans' attack. The Dynasty pushed up the ramp and tried to cut off the Titans, but Haxall boosted Twilight over to join the support, and with Slime, Janu, and Teezy pitching in, Sobensu opened up on Bastion and ripped through the entire Dynasty team. Welcome back. We are currently halfway through our series here. Let's see who can qualify for that loser's final versus NYXL tomorrow. San Francisco Shock currently lead up the series 2-0. Spark have to come back, but as you said earlier, no team has come back from a 0-2 deficit so far in the playoffs. Yeah, and I mean, mentality for these series has really been a big issue, and you can see, see it in some of the ult usage we had there for the Spark. Now, moving into our third map, it's already kind of been spoiled. We're going to Temple of Anubis. I think it's a map that plays into their style very well, but it's going to have to be a strong defense from the Spark. Their offense yeah. is a little bit weaker right now, so we're looking towards that A defense in particular. Can they drain the timing there? Can they potentially get a full hold on A. I think that's where Spark could excel on this map because Sinatra is sometimes overextending. The attacks from the Shock have been a little bit telegraphed. So if you can kind of just hang back, play your defensive style, take that ult lead, then I think they've got a good chance to at least bring this map back if they can have that solid defense. Yeah, I mean, they need that. They need to get back into the series. Let's go ahead and sweeten the deal and show you guys the performance bonus breakdown for these teams and where they qualify. A massive difference of $100,000 on the line for which team can advance. That's right. You know, I don't think either one of these teams wants to settle for that. They want more. Yeah, you know, you but, want that 1.1 at the top. But I mean, but this is one step. If you lose here, you're getting the smaller one. Right? Yeah. You're down 100K. So, minimum. <laughs> yeah. You know, this is one of the teams that wins could go all the way, but. There's a lot on the line. Temple of Anubis, a map where we've seen so many different play styles used across this season. You know, outside of GOATS, we've seen Genji dive here, but this meta is kind of settled so hard that it, you don't really see a ton of diversity. And as fun as it would be to see OG dive, right? The Winston dive, Genji Tracer, and Lucio Ana, the old school composition that Runaway, Lunatic High popularized in Korea. We saw other teams use it in the West. That would be really fun to see. I mean, that would be like, okay, they're pulling out all the stops here. They're using a really different and unique strategy here. Gushway, famous for using Winston Dive, but that's where he got his name, you know, the Primal Blade. I mean, he did it even in the World Cup for the Chinese team. Yep. But unfortunately, it's just a tease, and it will be the Mirror Reaper Doomfist here. See here, Striker just scouting out. Manages to retreat back. The rest of the team hovering here on that mid round. Will be a cut around the right side from Defender's perspective. That was a quick, that was a quick little TP. Yeah, just wants to keep the vision away from where he is. Maybe trying to do an audio fake out as well. Yes. Trying to make him think that he's going on a flank angle. Cosby gonna be forced to Wraith back. Yeah, but a lot of fake outs coming through from the Shock. You can really see that Striker and Sinatra. He's still waiting at home, man. As soon as Gushway comes out, Striker is ready, has the shots. Get rid of that Orisa, now Bats is gonna fall as well. I think you're really onto something about that audio cue as well, because, you know, if you hear that, if you feel like you the teleport is going to be behind, you're first of all kind of a little bit more passive on your approach, and second of all, you don't think that he's gonna be in this corner per se, because why would he teleport there? Oh, oh I see, yeah. he's trying to TP so he can get on top yeah. of that. Uh, I mean, there's obviously a lot of reasons as to why he would teleport there. I was thinking yesterday we saw somebody hiding in behind if you, the if little you, statues. If you get on top, you have a better chance of getting headshots from above. It's slight high ground advantage when they do peek around, you're gonna get those first few headshot blasts. Yeah. Just yesterday we, we were seeing Sabiobi play this angle, but he was playing it from the low ground behind the statue, trying to hide rather than play up top to get around the barriers. Striker, to be forced back. Wraith walk on cooldown for now, but isn't taking too much damage that he's concerned. We'll just start peeling back away towards the point. Now TP's up above and behind them. Drops down, has a great angle. Grisha not gonna hit, but they lose out on Smurf. Already tank line gonna be suffering. Everybody this else needs in the shot gonna be piled into the side room. They need to make this into the conversion on A. Flux is out, but Troyovin again. Back angle is there, Godspeed. This time comes up huge. Takes him down, he's just cleaning up house. All it takes is the one pick onto Smurf to set up this angle to where you can actually collapse onto the point. You've got control for the first time. 
The second approach there was where Gushui got his barrier off, so Striker couldn't do the same amount of damage up on the weird statue thing there that was up there, up there on trying to get those headshots on. They come in, they get the kill onto Smurf, and now they hold a ton of ultimates coming into B here. There's a real Going chance forward. for the double cap and having an amazing time bank when they've already been a great defensive team could be huge. As long as they can execute on it, like you said, the synergy hasn't really been there so far in the series. Down to the wire, not wanting to go to match point. Now is the time for things to mesh together for the side of the Spark. More ults coming online. Smurf going to be using the Supercharger first. Rishin goes in, manages to find a stun, but Bazzi can't quite line up that rocket punch so they don't find a kill. Just going to be waiting out that Orisa ult for now are the Spark. Look at them just sit and wait and be passive. They're waiting for Sinatra to punch in. They're waiting for that moment. There it is. The lesson's coming out. Sinatra nearly being taken down. Holds up the Meteor Strike for a little bit the longer. Angle. Now gonna be popping it. Striker in the back. Has already used the Rage Block, but Sinatra fights both supports with the Meteor Strike. Then falls up in the good way. Rhea has killed himself off with the primary fire. And that's it. Just one pick on the Striker is all the Spark can find. But the Spark trade ultimates efficiently here. And this next push, they're gonna have the Gravitic Flux. Godspeed had an opportunity there. Didn't pull the trigger when he saw the Meteor Strike come through. So, you know, while we were watching the flank, this is the Meteor Strike that comes in to respond to the Coalescence. He makes sure that Baby doesn't get value there. Very easy to chase down that Moira, who can't fade while in Coalescence. So he counters that ultimate. But the more impactful ultimates here really online for the Spark right now. See if that Supercharger can be the difference maker. Let's see. Pushing their way forward now. Striker undetected here on the flank as well. He's waiting back by the spawn. He's gonna push forward. Gravitic Flux comes in. Now Death Block Barriers through. Great. Barriers there from IDK, and they manage to find the kill. Bazzy gets rid of him. Gosby goes forward with a blossom of his own. Doesn't find anything, but now on the ground, firing up. Gets rid of Smurf, and the tank line is broken down. Sinatra gonna have to have a pop-off performance if they want to turn this one around. The delay tactics getting ready to come through, but Sinatra taken out. Second tick gonna be coming in for the Spark. Just shy of three minutes right now in the time bank. Moth is up on the high ground, skirting around the edges. Trying to keep himself alive, but Bebe manages to kill him off with that coalescence. Surf over on the side by himself, Sliver of HP. Will be taken down by Godspeed, who swiftly gets cut down by Sinatra with a rocket punch. But the fight is very much going the way of the Hong Show Spark Shock, just trying to buy as much time off this time bank as they possibly can. Both comes back in, rides the walls, but Bebe is there with a the right click, gets rid of him. They punch Troy Elvin off the point, and that will be the cap. 228 in the time bank for the Spark. Hong Show Spark do not choke when they have the advantage here. IDK's sound barrier finally really hits the mark, and the Spark now have this chance to have that great defense we were alluding to to bring this series back. This is best case scenario for the Spark right now. Let's see if they can turn it around. Still backs against the wall. Shock getting ready to go on the attack. We'll see how they fare in just a bit. Support your team with the official Overwatch League Coca-Cola bottles at CokeStore.com. Ships to all 50 U.S. states, Washington, D.C., and U.S. P.O. boxes. Welcome back to Temple of Anubis. Spark able to finish the map with two minutes and 28 seconds remaining. Shock getting ready to go on their attack and try to best that time. 
you know, the shock, regardless of what roster they're running, I've always kept comms positive in between rounds and see that little smirk there from Moth, who's otherwise normally a very serious looking dude when we are in, uh, you know, these in between round moments. Heading into Anubis, I think we'll probably see just that mirror composition again with the Doomfist Reaper. However, Heading into this map, remember, the Spark are so good at, you know, punching second, using Bazzi's rocket punch after Sinatra commits in, punishing Sinatra when he comes in with Coalescence as well. Because when you punch in with Rocket Punch's Doomfist, if there's a Coalescence online for Bebe, you can almost guarantee that Sinatra is dying there. He doesn't have the ability to really get out. He can uppercut and try to escape there. You know, Moth put down a speed boost, but that's something the that Spark have been doing really well throughout this meta. And their defense, you know, something we've been talking about a lot throughout the first three maps, but that's where I feel like they can really shine here. The time bank 228 is decent, but maybe, and this maybe we can get a full hold here on A for them, and this series could turn around. I think they really need it. They really need this to be a good defense. If they get rolled on the first attack, I mean, how could you come back from that? You're already down 0-2 in the series. It'd be absolutely huge if they can make a full hold happen. Port Shock just gonna be pushing forward. Mirrored Cops coming through. Barriers out. As they wrap around the same side. See. Godspeed not waiting on that side. Good corner check though from Striker just to make sure. We'll be taken off that high ground here. Has to use the TP to get back up. Real falling low, but Troy Hilbert gonna get picked first. Good punch from Bazzi. Opens things up. For this defense for the Spark, another punch forward. Violet now going to be eliminated. He built up a lot towards that Coalescence, but will not be able to use it here in this fight. It will be a Spark victory to start things off. It's a really good catch by Observers to show that corner check from Striker, because clearly that's where he's decided this is the best place to be on the Reaper. But, you know, he doesn't come up big with that. You see Bazzi get the opening kill. So Sinatra actually not punching first. He waited and had to use his punch to escape. The Coalescences are about to come online here. Holding the back in. Look at that. That's a great punch that you can either go in and get a pick or you can escape if you come at that angle. Yep. Choosing the ladder option. Yep. Not going to come in and just wanting to use his coalescence in the choke. But well, they have such a massive advantage. Here it is first. Coalescence is coming out for both of our Moiras. See a punch in there on a Godsby. Forces him off the high ground. All of Spark going to be retreating. And again, you pile into the side room. Get those barriers set up. Try to persevere in the fight. Rhea's got the Gravitic Flux ready to go, and he's going to be using it right now. Stunned as he goes up into the air. Have to slam them back down. Moth, however, going to get picked now. Sinatra going to fall as well. Meteor strike out from Bazzi. Drops out on top of Troy Hilton. Smushes him. Flattened like a pancake. That will be the cleanup. The spark still holds strong, not giving up a single tick so far. Troy Obin's great reaction there to Rhea's Gravitic Flux and the follow-up Focus Fire actually worked in Spark's favor because all the focus was on healing Rhea and Godsby and Bazzi did the remaining damage there. So he really did a great job of drawing the attention for it. It's not what his original intent was, but the conversion there is good from the Spark. Striker catches up in terms of that Reaper ult charge here too. That's something that he was way behind on on that previous attack. So now they're pretty even in ultimate. Sound is available for both teams. Beat coming out from both the start. IDK still going to be holding on to it. So that possum is in from Godsby, looking for some kills. But Sinatra has the punch. Gets rid of the Reaper. Bazzi answers back, finds Sinatra. Supercharger going to be taken away from the spark as IDK falls lower and lower. They try to keep him alive. He jumps back over to the point. But Troy Hillman hounds him down. Kills him off with those hyperspheres. Grecian in, doesn't find the stun. Troy Oven gonna be knocked into the wall. Bazzi looking to take him down, but the focus heals come through. They have him pocketed. Striker comes up with a double kill onto the tank line. Meteor Strike won't be able to find anything. Bazzi still delivering himself unto death. The cap will come in. It's gonna be about four minutes in the time bank for the shock to start on B. Really great sound barrier there for Moth. Striker goes extremely low, but he does escape. He keeps his Wraith Walk pretty close. Like, he uses it only in an emergency situations, it feels like oftentimes, so he draws a lot of the aggro, he escapes, and the shock convert those into kills. Bazzi's the ultimate there, actually not really going to buy them a ton of time, and he, but he wishes he has it, had it now. Yeah, for sure. Flux oh, coming oh, in, they all get halted, pull, pulled into the center, slam down, Rhea will fall. Very open playing up here on the high ground, just playing ring around the rosy, it would seem, with Bazzi. He will fall off, gets a little bit of passive shielding it from some damage as he takes down Sinatra. A one tick, snatched up here by the shock. The spark need to try to turn this one around. Second tick coming through. Rhea rolls in onto the point. Stunned up instantly by the accretion, and they can't get back in. Three minutes 
19 seconds locked down by the shock. Nearly a minute advantage. And now the Spark need to have a better attack here when we go into these overtime rounds. Great plays by Choyo Ben. Hands are shaking here. He's feeling it right now. He might have just brought his team into that 3 0 scenario. They've got the better time bank. Now we have to see what happens in OT and who can come out on top. Here we go. Let's get straight into it here. Overtime rounds coming through. Spark going to be on the attack first. Let's watch Shoyobin's last Gravitic Flux on this B attack, by the way. He comes in here, and the Hulk comes through, helping to set this up. And this is one of those moments, too, where he also converts this into grabbing high ground. See him get up there, yep. and then he's able to then fire, you know, his left clicks down onto the point. Really great moment there for the Shock. Shoyoban has really been changing the narrative. We've been talking about the eye test. He hasn't been coming up big, but this series he is. Yeah, definitely leveling up his performance here. All right, the Spark need to have a phenomenal attack here. Specter went for an aggressive flank. Now he's playing back around that corner. I know he's there. Moth up on the high ground too to try to knock anyone who steps forward to the fray. Jump forward, Seismic Slam is out. Several members on the side of the Spark are going to be going low. Gushway stand up for the moment, briefly. Will be kept alive for now. 90k falls down below half HP. Bebe as well. Has that Coalescence ready to go. This is it instantly, just spraying through the opening here, through the doorway. No kills to be found yet. Shot going to be peeling back, however. Sinatra nearly gets picked off. He'll be wrapping around the backhand side, trying to rejoin in with the rest of his team. Coalescence now in for Violet. Mazzy and Godsby play up on the high ground. This just isn't good enough yet. They have this high ground. They need to make something happen with it. Mazzy! Mazzy's there! Has the punch and the follow-up damage. Joey Hoban gonna be taken down. Sinatra stunned by the accretion in mid-air. Still not gonna be finished off yet. Goes for a short punch. It's knocking them back. Now the Meteor Strike in, but the Sound Barrier greets it, so will not be able to have the damage to kill anybody off. Now Smurf's gonna fall. Supercharger taken down as well. Sparker on the point. Meteor Strike into the back. Mazzy looking for Moth. Finishes him off. With that left click, and now Striker gone as well. Hangzhou really stepping up how they're using their old game here. IDK not afraid to use the sound bear this time when Sinatra comes in with that ultimate. The Meteor Strike coming in is one of those scary things that can turn things around if he gets a single pick. Great plays by Violet as well to keep Sinatra alive, so he could strike there. Great plays from both teams. But the Hangzhou Spark walk into this next point without a sound bear. It's going to need to be an aggressive push with an early pick, if they're gonna hope to win this. Oh, Super Charger's Charger out! Gonna be in the Colossus. There it is! Bazzi manages to find Sinatra. Gravitic Plux is there, Bazzi falls low. Manages to survive, but IDK will be eliminated. Do they just reset? They have 40 seconds remaining, have to make the call right now. It's a tough call to make. They're the not resetting. Forward. Oh no, they go up into the air with the Gravitic Flux out from Rhea, so the punch does not connect. Striker uses the Death Blossom, manages to get rid of Bazzi. Now TP's forward, they're looking for staggers, they're looking to finish this right now and not allow the Spark to get back over to point B as a solid six-man unit. It seems like that might just not happen at all for them. 20 seconds remaining, someone's gonna have to attack, both tanks still dead, someone's gonna have to go to Wrecking Ball. Bebe, right. Bebe Be Be does have this Coalescence, that's gonna be really their only hope. They're gonna have to come in right there. With that there, Gushui does swap over the Wrecking Ball, as you mentioned. He's coming around the right side to tag, and then they're going to have to collapse in from the center. He's making his way through, manages to swing in. Stun up onto the high ground, Godsby knocked to the ground. Grisha now going to be on cooldown, the Death Blossom ready to go. Gushui still just swinging his way through, Sinatra can take it down, Bazzi Huge. finds the kill. Godsby now, great angle, Tensha Striker forces the Wraith walk. Starts pushing his way up the point, gets moved to the side, the Death Blossom is there! Spark take it down! Joey Evan and Violet fall! Striker's the last one left alive and he's still at half HP! Second tick, gonna be snagged and it seems like a Spark might just be able to make this happen in OT. Bazzi gets rid of Striker. It's a swap over onto the Tracer here from Sinatra, forces out with a recall, but it's off the point and the Spark get across the finish line! They can't be in OT! That is the definition of a clutch push 
They made a tough call for Kilios to use that Gravitic Flux in a fight that was lost. 40 seconds on the clock. You said it, they have to make the call right now. They pull out the Gravitic Flux, it fails. They don't get the kills they're looking for. And at that moment, only the hopes and dreams of the Spark players sunk to zero, as they knew that with only 20 seconds left, their likelihood to take B was super low. But they made that clutch push happen. Gushway comes in on the Wrecking Ball, gets that extra shielding, comes in and causes some disruption. They get the first pick. And San Francisco Shock had that B point stolen away from them. No real ults to speak of, just raw mechanics coming through from the Spark in an incredibly clutch fight when they had 20 seconds to go. That's the kind of stuff champions are made of. That's the championship level play that we've been waiting for for the Spark. Ult usage seems to be getting better. It feels like this team is starting to really come online and the nerves are being shaken off a little bit. We talked about the defense being pretty good on A. They had the fast cap on B, the Shock did. That's why they have this great time bank here. But the Hangzhou Spark, if they can have a better defense here, if they could just make it happen, if they can stall out B, there's hope here, there is a chance. And what's been otherwise a very one-sided series between these two, same the coughs. For three minutes, the first time out. Now I'll have to do it for three minutes and 19 seconds. Lock will start ticking down, no surprises, no changes as far as the compositions are concerned. Barrier setup comes in. Spark ready to greet them on the approach. Again, Godsby actually hanging out on this right side. Same statue position that Striker did. Yep. Drops down. Toyhoven nearly falling. Uppercut goes through. Sinatra, however, trying to match. Has the rocket punch ready to go. Gets the hit. Knocks Rhea back, and that is going to be, to be taken down at the start. Absolutely crucial here for the shock. Now Gushway falling to the orb from Violet. Rhea's got a sliver of HP. Will be finished off Violet. Coming up with the kills. Violet with a great push here. He surged up to 80% plus there. When everyone got low, when Shoyobin was low, and the Shock were looking like they might get wiped there, he just did so much healing, had the healing orb out. He has the faster coalescence. Bebe is finally catching up here, obviously passively. Comes into that a little bit as well, but Violet with a great performance. And now he has the ultimate that could help open this up. He falls low instantly as they start pushing forward. Coalescence is out from Bebe first, and Moth gonna be taken down. Bazzi comes up clutch, manages to find two. They chase forward, they get to the clean up here, and they buy themselves some time just on the back of a single ultimate from Bebe. And this is something we haven't really been seeing from the Hangzhou Spark that much this series, is playing forward, playing aggressively, and denying the Shock setups on these attack. Uh, on these attacks, Violet gets stunned before he can use Coalescence there. That's what Rhea was clearly preparing for. He does get stunned and doesn't use it, so he's still holding that. So that's actually huge. Bebe used his on that previous defense. Look at how far forward they're playing here. They're not messing around. Flux is ready here in a great choke. Uh, that's going to be two yoinked up into the air. Moth just shy of that sound barrier, and Rhea will be able to finish him off with the Hyperspheres. And a grasp absorbing a lot. They spot Sinatra and Bazzi again. He's ready for him to hit the ground. X him out with a punch, and now we're down below two minutes for the shock. That's amazing ult tracking, too, to know that Moth was just barely out of sound barrier range. You know, they had to take a guess. I mean, he was just a few percentage points away, but you're feeling like there's no way he has this right. They're in the choke. We have Meteor Strike. Didn't have to commit it there. Sinatra commits his, though, so that's another ult lost. And now the Coalescence. You know, Pendulum swings back into Bebe's favor. He's going to have his for this next defense. Violet should build his in a longer fight, but we're looking at a winnable map here now for the Spark. Absolutely. 70 seconds left here on the clock. They've almost got six ultimates. Jump in. Sinatra tagged up. Sound barrier forced out. TP onto the high ground. Striker looking to contest with Godsby because of the shielding. Godsby has to retreat. Bazzi going to be taken down. Throw him and finds the kill. The Death Blossom is in. He manages to find Spurf. Striker strikes back, however. Equalizes onto the enemy Orisa, and now the Shock are here. They are capping the point with 50 seconds remaining. Punch charged up as it comes over onto the point, gets forced out. The Meteor Strike is there. He's got to hit the ground, and he can't arrive in time. But they finish with under a minute, so it's a minute and 46 to the Shock, a minute for the Spark. We're going to extra rounds. We are going to extra rounds here once again. A very close battle between these two teams. Spark absolutely need to bring this back. They were so close to the hold there, but it's not enough in the end. On a knife's edge right now, this map. Let's see who comes out on top when we come back.
here we go. That's right, we're still on Temple of Anubis. Not done yet. The score is four to four. A minute in the time bank for the Spark. A minute and 46 for the Shock. Spark have been narrowing it down in terms of how this map started. You know, a massive deficit in terms of time bank into, you know, now only 46 seconds behind. May will be the choice of defense here. Sinatra showing his flexibility on the damage roll. He's played so many heroes here in this postseason. And May just fits the book. They can't sub Rascal in mid-map. No, they cannot. A lot of damage there. May they got to be taken down. Really aggressive positioning. The Shock, they spill off the high ground. They take the fight straight to the Spark in the choke. Yeah, the Spark reset very quickly, though. And this could have been a disaster, especially with May on the field. If you lose a member like that and you try to go for the fast reset, you might just get slowed. And then you're losing way more time. Still, half the time off the clock. But the Shock don't build really any ultimates from this. And Spark still have a chance here to get an opening pick to somehow open this point up. They're going to go mid, it looks like. Barriers are out. They've got to be decisive. Yeah, waiting on the wall. First barrier going to be broken down. Sinatra trying to up the high ground, stunned up, but they can't finish him off. Still holds onto that ice block as well. Feels his way back to the point. Eight seconds remaining. Somebody's going to have the tag. Is it TP into the back line for Striker right now, applying pressure? Somebody's got to get to the point. Can they even make it there? They do. But Rhea is going to fall immediately thereafter. Now Gushway gone. The front line broken down. As he up into the air, frozen. And hosed by the Coalescence. Maybe we'll sit back using that ultimate, but to no avail. It's just the supports here on the point. The fade into the backside. He'll get finished off. That is the hold on point A. No percentage surrendered by the Shock. We have to give a ton of credit to Krusty and the Shock coaching staff because the preparation going into this looks phenomenal. I mean, really, when you look at how that defense was executed for the Shock, they played so much around the fact that the Spark are often indecisive and often are not able to commit into initiating fights without ultimates. And when you run the May, it makes it so much easier to kind of stagger and slow everyone. And the Shock basically just put up a wall by, you know, setting up their six members to kind of block where the Spark were going to try to enter the point. They played it slow because they knew that the Spark were just waiting for the Shock to dive into them so they could then counter with their secondary rocket punches, etc., and take that fight somehow. But when you're the defending team, you have that advantage. You can sit back, you can be patient, and just kind of slow the Spark down. Then they had to aggressively try to touch the point, and it's already a lost fight at that point. The Shock just need one tick now. This is... You know, as King's Row was, a drawable map. Yep. But that's what they have to hope for now. Yeah, the, so the side of the spark gotta hold them off because otherwise that's shock moving up the match point. This we we've been really trying to push up the spark's defensive capabilities here and how they're great at reacting. They're gonna really have to make it happen here. I've been saying that all series long, and I don't know if it's ever gonna happen. If it doesn't happen here. They're gonna stick with the Doomfist Reaper. No May for the Spark. They're sticking with what they've been using all series long. I better hope it works. Gonna try to react to Sinatra's punch here again. Punch coming out, checking that right side. Doesn't have a hit, up the cut. Doesn't manage to find a tag. Dive back down with the side slam. Quite big here for Sinatra. Manages to stay alive and already Spark. Gonna be surrendering the high ground. Pulling their way back. Another big uppercut catches two. As he trying to fire back, Accretion is there. And Troy Yeoman pushes past the barrier to finish off the Doom Fist. Which way, trying to stay alive. The Coalescence out from Bebe. Doing what he can to top everybody up. The Meteor Strike is there. Bebe nearly gets picked off. They dumped in behind the Orissa barrier, but no one is on the point. And the Shock will take Temple of Anubis. They move up 3 0 now at match point. Feels like it's just destiny. The San Francisco Shock are blasting their way one step at a time towards that Grand Files or one map away from facing New York. And it is not looking good for the Hangzhou side of things. They had a great heroic set of attempts to defend there on Anubis, but they all come up empty in the end. Like we said, no one's been able to come back from a 0-2 deficit. Now they're 0-3. Hangzhou Spark need a reverse sweep if they want to make it to that loser's final tomorrow. The Overwatch League is powered by Intel. Game, record, stream without compromise on Intel Core i7. Omen, the official PC and display of the Overwatch League. And by ZipChair Gaming, the official chair supplier of the Overwatch League.
The Overwatch League is brought to you by Pringles Wavy. They're not not Pringles. Welcome back. We are currently at match point. San Francisco Shock in the lead 3-0. Now the Spark, if they want to move forward into that loser's final tomorrow, have to pull off a reverse sweep, something that has not been done in the playoffs so far. Yeah, never in Overwatch League history, so it's going to have to be now. I mean, <laughs> can this comeback occur? I think so. Anubis, they looked a lot more alive. The game looked a lot closer. The team was actually being aggressive, playing more towards the shock style when they needed to be, because playing defensive versus playing aggressive, you know, far forward defenses and stuff like that, it's not a hard rule. It really just depends on the situation. When you're down on ultimates and your opponent, you know, is looking for a better time bank, you have to actually play forward. You have to take risks. And the Spark have overall been very risk averse, but they're adapting finally in this series. I think a win, you know, going into our fourth map, obviously it's required for them to get the reverse yeah. sweep. So, I mean, let's just put that out there. But I think if they could take that win, and if they keep, start, you know, bringing that ult synergy back up, I think there's a chance. I mean, there's always a chance. Yeah. Not out of it yet, but it's looking grim. We do have some substitutions, however, on the side of the San Francisco Shock. It'll be Rascal stepping in for Striker. That's right. And we'll also have Architect subbing in for Sinatra. So kind of casting a wider net in terms of the damage hero pools between these two players. They kind of have a lot of interchangeable hero pools. When you think about Rascal, you think about the Farah and you think about the Mei more than anything else in terms of what his best heroes are. Sure. But he can play anything. Yeah. And that's why the Shock have four DPS players, but they're all able to cast a wide net. And that's why when you go deeper into a series like this, I mean, four maps, in. I mean, we might not see 5th, 6th, or 7th, but as we head into Dorado, there's a lot of flexibility here, and now you can play May defenses on A, you can set up for a Farah attack, you can really just throw curveballs at the Spark, and there's not much they could do about it. You know, they, they're just going to have to react, they're going to have to scout. Not to mention Architect's a great Widow player, I don't think he'll really be sticking with that one outside of perhaps, maybe even an opening shot, but... Yeah, given the double barrier meta, Widow is falling off. So this is historically a very bad map for the Shock. 3-4. It's only just below negative, but for the with the season they've had, that's one of their lowest, so... I mean, given the start of the season and, you know, the map pool changing around, I think this is actually the first map that Spark have a winning record on, besides Busan. Yeah. Both Temple and King's Row, they had losing records, so... Uh, a positive beacon here for the Spark. Let's see if it's enough for them find victory as they will be starting things off on this defense. Godsby already playing around the side for a flank. And he expects the Bastion here, it looks like, as well. He's going to wait till the last second. That's pushing forward. Yeah, the wall is... many people have moved up, though. The wall isn't very good there, either. There's no real opportunity to make anything happen here. You might have been able to pick one of the supports. And now he's at a risk of being frozen. The wall coming in. Wraith form going to have to be used. Cancel that one a little bit early. There's Bastion. a better wall. It's pushing his way forward. Two members, however, are going to be frozen. Bastion's going to be cut down. Architect set up behind that experimental barrier. Finds the kill and already. Seems like this is going to have to be a reset call for the Hangzhou Spark to try to get back and defend before Shock rolls into A. They're using this setup here in the room to delay for those resets, but I mean, the, the Bastion composition is so unforgiving. You get caught once, you get slowed, you're out there. I mean, the highest DPS in the game, sorry, you're, you're just dead. It's not going to happen. You're not getting out. You're not going to turn the fight around. You start to lose momentum against a Bastion, and things just get out of hand very quickly. Really nice setup here for Choyo Bin. Barrier on the low ground for the cart. He has the ability to pop, top, uh, you know, block Architect here with his experimental barrier. Yep. We've got double coverage. And you don't have really any shield break on the side of the Spark right now. So good luck getting through it. Wall comes up for you. Boosted over the top, cut off from his team for the moment. As Bazzi comes up clutch, finds the shots on the Rascal, gets rid of the bank. Going to be delaying that Blizzard a bit, but Bazzi's himself now going to be delayed as he gets picked off by Smurf. All Essence will keep Godsby topped up. The cart is holding for now. TP over to the side, gets in, trying to take down that Bastion, but the Immortality field is taunted by Moth. Manages to keep him safe. Moves over to the other side, however, manages to find Violet. Rhea gonna fall, Troy Open finding the kill, the card's still advancing. Seems like not really too many options as far as who can tag as Gushue will be taken down. Now walled off, the DPS left, not to try. Seems like this will just be the push in inevitably into A. 
Bebe swapping over to the Ana here too. Can be quite strong if you could hit those bio grenades because that's when the Bastion can really have problems staying alive. Even if he's under immortality field and he lives uh, you know, through a lot of that damage, he can't be healed up. So once that's gone, you know, he does die. You know, that's the big pairing you want is the healing on top of the immortality field. So he goes low, but then gets topped up if he's healed denied by that bio grenade. That could be massive. Really cool Bastion set up here to stop any flankers from poking around the corner. So denying a lot of vision here. They're going to have to drop down to kind of see where everyone is trying to set up on the point. Because they need this Death Blossom to be big, and you can't do that without having vision. Immortality field taken down. Gods being into the back. Now going to be spotted. They get halted in towards the cart. Death Blossom unnecessary. Bionade helps set up some of these kills. Godsby will be frozen there in the back end, but it's perfectly safe. Yeah. Good setup there from Bastion. Kind of deny that stagger kill. That was actually really patient from the Spark. They didn't really commit any ultimates. The Bio Grenade hit multiple targets there. And Godsby's flank there kind of set the Shock into a bit of disarray. They didn't commit the Blizzard. You know, if Shock had committed the Blizzard there, this would have been amazing for the Spark. But still, very efficient. Now he's got the opportunity to set up for the real Blossom. Yep, again, he's on the flank. We spotted out, though. We hear the Blizzard come out from Rascal. Bassy going to be matching. Everybody just going to get frozen up here on the point. It would seem as we play. Tries to play in behind the shield. Supercharger is out. Godspeed cleans up two. Architect with that configuration tank. The drag is back into their favor, but he's going to be stunned up. Finished off by the accretion from Rhea. And again, the shock go back into the spawn. This is the trade you want if you're the Hangzhou Spark. You're very okay with how this went. Basically, every ult on your side is tossed out. And we will have now Choyo Bin obviously having the ability to predict Flux Violet can chase the target with Coalescence to try to set up for an opening pick here. But it's very difficult to use that around the corner. There's Coalescence first. Yeah, Here's the Flux. One. The wall is out. Rhea, however, was isolated. Does get finished off. Now maybe got to fall. And this will just be the cleanup for the side of the shock, finally able to get that cart rolling. And that's something you can't deal with as a spark, given the ults they had, rather the lack thereof. So you know the Flux doesn't come out. The Coalescence chases the kill. There's no way to really stop that from happening. You kind of just have to back off and try to reset for this B contest. They have Nano Boost, so there's definitely a way to really stick to this, prevent the shock from taking it. Rascal doesn't have Blizzard, so you feel pretty good about denying this cart from rolling through, and you're about to trade up some ultimates. Sound Barrier almost ready for IDK. Nano has to buy time for that moment. Hey, babe. There it is. Oh, falling low. Nano gonna be tossed out. Fast. Tries to get himself over the May wall. They halt him forward. Still looking for the kills. Gets the Troy lives. Punch there on a Troy helmet, but he does not get taken down because he wasn't able to charge up that rocket punch. Rhea stuck in the blizzard there on the point. Will be finished off, but it's going to be an exchange of the Sigmas. Troy Hoban has fallen as well, but Godspeed then cut off. Wraith Walk expired. It's taken down. Down barrier is still going to be used by IDK. They want to win a fight, but Architect creates him with an uppercut. Knocks his hat off. IDK wanted to hold the sound barrier. He was playing for the future, right? He was playing for not this defense, but the next one. So he held it. He thought, we traded this. I have the ability to sound barrier if things get a little bit more dire, if they get a little bit more dicey. But he uses it there late at the end after the fight is lost. And it's not the first one of these IDK sound barriers we've seen in this series that have really just not gotten the value you're looking for. So he gets neither the ability to hold the sound barrier for this push, nor the hold there on B. And that's just really bad for the Sparks. Moth still has his. Up around the side, get the drop down. They're trying to contest the cart. Architect going to be forced into the Meteor Strike. Show you how it nearly gets taken down. The sound barrier is perfect, and Architect arrives. Fantastic fashion, cleaning up two. As he only able to find one. Architect is waiting it out. Gets rid of Bebe. Cleans up Gooshway. This man is on fire. And Rasko comes out on the May. I mean, this is why he subbed in. Architect be able to play so many different heroes. He can play the Bastion, but he can also play the Doomfist. You know, it's not just Sinatra on this squad. And they're set up for what can be so frustrating to deal with when you're running the Reaper and the, the uh, Doomfist yourself. This May slows the walls. And they haven't dealt with it all series. Now they've got to change focus. Shocker one step ahead. Okay, called in for the Gravitic Flux. We drop down to the ground. Troy Hoban stunned up there. Bazzi finds the kill with the uppercut. We are going to be forced off the high ground, losing that positional advantage, but finally tries to bring this one back into their favor with the Coalescence. Not going to be gone, but obviously a much faster run back for him. As Troy Hilman will be swapping over onto the wrecking ball, just trying to get back here in time. Nice pushback, the nice Bazzy, the rocket punch on the back end of that hall. Freeze on the Gooshway, will be finished off. Bazzy trying to play up onto the high ground here again, but leaps over to the side as Godspeed's forced into Wraith. 
Rascal threatening to freeze him up. Cosmic Slam in. That's gonna be a nice punch from Bazzi. The Death Blossom unable to find anything. Heart halted here for the moment. Now starting to roll forward. They need to contest this one. Cosby plays up. The shield's gonna be expiring. Supercharger, the barrier! Oh no, it denies him access! He cannot finish it off! Just trying to buy time here is Rhea on the Wrecking Ball, but he's knocked up. Yeah, Pile Driver in, IDK falls. Sound Barrier is out from Moth, looking to finish this one now. As he falls low, goes in with a Meteor Strike, but finds nothing. Architect greets him with his own ultimate. The Minefield just in case. But they will be able to roll through to the end with 32 seconds remaining. I feel like it all goes back to that Sound Barrier on B from IDK. I mean, if he commits that earlier, they perhaps turn that fight. He commits it late, so they can't stop the C push either. I mean, you called it out right when it happened. Moth had the perfect sound barrier right afterwards. He didn't have his to respond. And San Francisco Shock found themselves one ult up for the rest of that C push because of it. Once they won that secondary team fight, all the Spark could do was try to delay. It just wasn't possible. It's really hard to delay on Dorado because of how far away the cart's ending point is from the spawn and the kind of corridor you have to go through there. So it's pretty easy to deny that, especially when you're running a May. And as the San Francisco Shock were, 32 seconds isn't the most amazing time bank of all time or anything like that. Sure. But I mean, Hangzhou Spark's biggest weakness has been being aggressive, has been these attacks. The gods be locks in the far to start here. And I I hope we, we see it. You know, I hope he commits to it a little bit further here because we need to see something to get around these barriers that are going to be protecting Architect's Bastion on the defense. We're not seeing a mercy to match so far from the Spark, so it might just be a hover pick here for Godspy. If they're deciding now... I mean, no. they have to know that this Bastion's going to be here. It may just be they, they poke out with the sound barrier and then he swaps. I don't think it's going to be the Ana, if I'm honest with you guys. <laughs> uh, yeah, changing things up. Bazzi going to be going okay. over to the Bastion. They want to set up a bunker here on the cart. So the crossfire here with the Farah can be quite strong. You know, you, nope. have, you have the Bastion in the front, and then the Farah kind of flanks around the side. We have seen this before. It's very unreliable healing for the Farah, so maybe we'll be swapping over onto, onto the Ana, so he can tag him in the air. I mean, we've never really seen this used very much. I mean, it's not the first time, but... It's very risky. He is going to swap over to the Mercy because they need a little bit more stability. Also potentially have that res. Bebe's most famous hero back at Apex was the Mercy. It's usually IDK who has to pick up that role nowadays, but he's very good on Mercy, and this is the best map for far we've seen so far. Immortality field already gone from the side of the Spark. Stun in on Naria. Gets chunked down to half HP, and Rascal. A straight shot in on the Gushway, and yep. Architect's like, okay, what are you gonna do? I got two barriers defending me, and now they can't res. This is a really rough spot here for the Spark. Bebe and Godsby, former teammates of Troyo Ben, Architect, the X6 players, they've known each other for so long. They're pulling ahead, the Shock are here. I mean, they've got full control over this point. Bazzi hasn't been able to get a reliable setup. The Bio Grenade here is good. Godsby has been pushed out. I mean, what can you do? Pushes out around the corner. Immortality Field's gonna be used. They boost them up. Rhea's slowly Still pushing the in cart. There. You know, that's that's something they've got at least. It's done! There you go. That's gonna be the kill. There's no mercy on the side of the Shock, so Godsby finds the necessary kill. Taking down Architect to open things up the cart and that's, finally start advancing. That's the kill you need, too, on the Bastion to really open up things for the Farah. So Godsby's chasing far here now because there's not reliable counters to shutting him down outside of the Ana, but, you know, the healing output here for Bebe will keep him alive. You can see Architect's just trying to poke as he rejoins onto the point. They would love to deny that setup here. Barrage is almost ready. Blizzard's ready, coming around from the side, Rascal. Drops it in, IDK instantly frozen, take it down. Rascal falling low, goes into the ice block. Stays alive, it's a trade out on the Batistas, but now Bazzi will fall. The configuration tank is in for Architect, looking to shut down the rest of this push. Got him Up in the air, and that's a beautiful shot from Architect. Takes guts, be right out of the sky. You've got to be focused on the next fight here for the Spark. Here's the Flux. Now Flux comes in, Rhea slams down two. The tanks disappear. Very nice setup from him, but they still need to push forward. Which way to take a nap? Both supports here. Have the lamps out. Will be eliminated. They get halted together. Rascal's back! Rascal does rejoin. The freeze up Rhea. He is so very low, but he will be able to survive. And the cart glides in. It's about four minutes on the clock now for the spark. It's incredible they did it without the rocket barrage here. 
Yep. Does have it available. It's a long stun because it doesn't actually take impact until you hit the ground, so you fall for a long time. That's Best just stun getting hit get. by everything in the air right now. But it's fine for him. He obviously is going to be safe to, to just, you know, jump back up. And they have control of these chokes. It's The onus now is on the shock to bring this back. Rascal swaps over to the Farah himself. It's going to be a Farah 1v1 here. Very exciting to see and a little bit rarer in this meta. But Hangzhou Spark have the better setup because they have the barrage. And it's tough to actually contest this corner if you're running the Farah. They just kind of have to wait as the cart moves freely until Architect can get that damage done around the side. He's actually setting up at the front now, but the barrier gets broken first because Bazzi was firing before it was set. They have to use the early immortality field here as well. So there's a huge opening for God's Beast Barrage now. Yep. They pop that one down, looking to hold them forward. They avoid it. God's Beast still has been holding on to this barrage quite some time, drifting off to the side of the map as they go in for this pharmacy. 2v2. Come back coming through. Troy Yeoman going in with the Gravitic Flux. Tries to slam them down. The immortality field's ready to go. So they manage to stay alive. Now the Ant Matrix is out. As he Weaves the shots in underneath the cart, getting rid of Troy Hillman. Great angle. Yep, very nicely done. The hold dump. They're getting melted. There's going to be the barrage coming in from the back side. Troy Hillman manages to get res back in, and Rascal dunks on Godsby. Eliminates that enemy far on the cart. Still so going to be holding for now. Troy Hillman trying to play up into the front. Moth, Sliver of HP, holds it back through. Gooshway finds the kill, and Troy Hillman will finish himself off. That was a great barrage timing there from Godsby. They're going to use the tank here. A little bit excessive, but hey, make sure that no one can stagger back into delay on the point. Very nice timing on the barrage there to try to deny the res. Just barely Moth was able to live and get that off, so they bought some time. But that's the kind of barrage you're looking for. Guaranteed value. Rascal has his now. They've got their own configuration tank. Immortality field here. You're only going to get one. So are you blocking the tank? Or are you blocking the barrage? Well, it's going to be God's be taken down already. Architect. They have to reset. Eliminates him. And yeah, they have to peel back. Oh my god, look at this angle. Immortality is used. They get the res off. They drag Rascal back through, they try to finish him off. Cannot quite find that kill. He's gonna be hitting the ground. Has an immortality field of his own as he tries to find his angle for this barrage. He has full control. He's gonna drop in, and there you have it! Rascal comes up with a quadra kill. You have that choke controlled, you have that corner controlled. They can't shut you down, they can't knock you out of the sky, not with a the comp they're running. And you just get to sit there and wait. Immortality field used just earlier. You know it. You know you can get value out of this process. There's nothing they could do about I, it. I mean, the most reliable thing you would have would be a sleep dart and a creation, but maybe the bear the experiment the the barrier. But like he doesn't have yeah. he doesn't have the uh, kinetic grasp, and it's just so much damage done in a single point, and it's the most ultra efficient thing you could do. Then he swaps back to the May for the delay here. Great opportunities now for the shock to really just keep themselves ahead and ult economy. And the tank hasn't even had to be used yet. Another immortality field gonna be burned by the sound of the spark. Architect has one of his own to try to stay safe. The sleep dart does go through. Maywall coming up. No way to finish him off. They burn the immortality field. Maybe the flux can be big. The card is slowly coming through. They brought the ant matrix with the configuration tank. Graphitic flux slams him back down, but no kills to be found yet from the side of the spark. Support's too good here. They can't do enough damage to knock anyone down to half health, despite the immortality field being used. They've gotten the cart down underneath this walkway. Looking for the Hulk. Can they grasp? Greeting Architect, tossing out the barrier. Look for a pull off the high ground there on the Violet, but they're unable to find it. Which we're going lower and lower, and Troy Hillman getting right over top of them. Trying to build up quickly for that next riveting flux, and he's nearly got it. 25% away. Maybe. Both supports just having to heal each other. Sleep does hit. Troy huge. Hillman's gonna be taking a nap. Mortality field is out. Bazzi will be eliminated. They can't keep him alive. Rascal finds that kill. God's being what a Hail Mary oh, play down that front line. Flank around. Blizzard is out. Rascal looking to freeze them. Godsby manages to find one with the configuration tank. He's just on the edge of the blizzard. They try to keep him alive. Immortality field blast just long enough. So he will be in the fight. The final shot takes out Architect. But can they get the cart rolling? They need to get around this corner and put him back into sentry mode. They start moving up. Two going to be clipped by the Flux. Out from the shock. Troyovan gets rid of one. Rhea taken down. Supercharger is in. Godsby stunned up. Eliminated. And that is going to be controlled back into the hands of the shock. This is their last moments here for the spark. They used everything. They used the tank. Flux, there's no more tools here. Violet's got the window. They have immortality field. There's going to be a tank here for Architect. The only thing they really lost was Blizzard and the Supercharger. The Shock have all the tools. They have all the cards in their hand. The spark are going to have to make a miracle happen here. They've made so many happen this season and in postseason as well. But one more chance is all they've got, and they're going to try to fight for high ground. 30 seconds remaining here for the spark. Their playoffs run, their season on the line. Need to get across the finish line here on Dorado to go to extra innings. 
Now down to 20. They wrap their way around. Architect drops down here onto the card. Bionated. Can't receive any healing, but still gonna be okay. The Immortality Field goes out. Now the Ant Matrix is ready from the side of Violet, keeping him alive. Godspeed's on the other side of the Ant Matrix of his own, as well as the Arisa Barrier. They try to find the pool on the Violet on the high ground. They're unable to do so. he has got the Blizzard. We'll have to use it in the fight. Pulses that one out as the configuration takes damage by Omen. Oh my god, the Kinetic Grass comes in, and he says no! They don't want to give the Spark another chance. They don't want to go to extra innings. They want to close out the auto right that now. Was good, though. Sparker answering back. Godby finds Architect now. Smurf going to be gone. Joey Hillman out of the fight. They have the res. Putting Smurf back through. But Rascal now violent falling. They're not there yet, though. Huncho Spark hanging in it. Start advancing the card. Shock. Can they delay? Architect is still in the Bastion. They've got the Ice Wall. They should be able to stop them from denying this finish. There it is. The wall comes up, and they will roll through. They're not going down yet. One minute to a minute 32. Hongzo Spark doing the complete wraparound, taking the ultimate risk, tournament life on the line. They try to take high ground, they fail, they wrap around, and they set up for big damage. Godsby on that Bastion makes it happen despite the absorb on the Blizzard. The Spark will not die yet. They're keeping the hope alive here in this series. That they are. So close in these time banks. Let's see who can take it in the end. And here we go. Not out of it yet, Hangzhou Spark holding on by a thread. 32 second advantage for the side of the San Francisco Shock as we go into extra innings on Dorado. This is it. Indeed. For the, for the Spark, the attack here, they're gonna run once again the Farah. Okay, they're going for the right side approach. It worked pretty well last time. They didn't have to use the barrage for a long time. It's gonna bode well if they can get A. Alt in. Great barrier there, actually. Long range from Rhea to help protect them. Architect sitting in Look a at the bomb. angle. It's very really good. good angle here from Godsby. We can send, but he can't knock anybody off that high ground. Immortality Field barely keeps Architect alive. Bionade on the two. Bazzi and Gushway. It's on cooldown now. Violet. Godsby coming around. Finds Violet. Takes down that Ana. Still has a pocket healing from Bebe. That is a fantastic start to this push for the side of the Spark. They just can't get into position to deal with the Farah. Godspeed's just running circles around him right now. And he's going to have the barrage. The on the cart. Godspeed taking a lot of damage as he pushes up over the top of the buildings here. He's completely behind them. Yep, Rob grabbing around the side. And Matrix is out, though, so they got to be careful. And Bassi is walled off. Finally breaks down that May wall. Rascal. Hard advancing up into the marketplace. And Rascal gets taken out. On the sliver of HP, Godsby hovering around the back, still holds onto the barrage, might not need to use it here. Architect, however, manages to find one as Bazzi will be taken out. He's looking for more. The res is there. Both immortality fields gonna be eliminated. They're, they're really gliding forward, they're playing so far back, they can't contest this one. It just glides into A for they're, free! They're abusing the fact that Moth. So when Godsby has this barrage, Moth doesn't want to use his immortality field because he knows that the barrage is going to come right after. So they're actually just pushing through super hard while Moth can't use that. The threat of the barrage is actually putting Shock in such an uncomfortable position. He still has it here. And if he uses it early in any of these situations, then the barrage is going to be big. Godsby going low. Dips back below. The other side of the rooftop. The wind condition Violet. here is the blizzard. The blizzard needs to be big here for Shock. That can shut this down as long as they can get into position. They're playing safe and back right now. They know they have the better time bank. Here comes the flank. Troy Hillman just denied one. They don't see him. Okay, do the same. It would be the third ult denied by a kinetic grasp so far in the Overwatch League. Could be big. They made it to the end of the body with a minute remaining. The far check. Now he's dropping now down. Far. Looking for it. The boost up there on the Bazzi. He's going to be falling low. And Matrix is out. They get this place. Blizzard goes in. It does not get denied. Gushway going to be frozen. The pocket healing coming in. But the Bionade is on top of him. The Immortality Field cleaned up by Architect. They're zoned off the cart. Man, they can't get there in time. But man, did the Spark do a good job with what little time they had. They make it halfway to B. That's, they certainly did. And you could see the really great work by our observing team to kind of showcase what it's like to get a May into position to have that push-stopping blizzard. 
full flank back into the room, using the, the May wall to then lift yourself up to get a better angle, making sure that you're not going to get absorbed by the kinetic grabs, watching where Rhea is, and then dropping it down. Because with the setup that the Spark have, there's no sound barrier, there's no transcendence, there's no real counter to this Blizzard with the comp they're running. If that Blizzard hits, the push is over. You're already in overtime. It ticks down so quickly. So that's the kind of setup from, honestly, the world's best May, Rascal, that you need to have. And it was amazing that we got to see that kind of from his perspective, how he got into that position. But as you say, the cart did move quite a distance. If the Hangzhou Spark can have a similar May defense here, and there's a real chance. I mean, I've been saying it for four maps now, but I mean, the, the hope is always there. And they've been really clutching out a lot of these fights. I mean, the finish of this map was insane. Yep. Where they were able to flank all the way around. Let's see what happens here. As Architect hey. teases the Farah. Very rare to see that one. I think they're expecting a Bastion setup. That's why we see the Hanzo. But I don't think it's going to last. Okay, we'll just go ahead and swap this one back over. Violet onto the Moira as well. Very forward setup here for the Spark as well. Yeah, not going for the wrap around the right side. Godspeed. Go, kind of straight over, over the cart, but Spark, they're charging up straight towards the spawn. Godspeed's in the back, nearly takes down Smurf. He's got a sliver of HP remaining. He's ducking and diving behind that barrier. Godspeed sees this, pushes for it, finishes him off, but it's at the cost of IDK and Rhea. And now Bazzy gonna be going down. That is gonna be a good amount of distance. Given up here by the Spark as they continue to stagger. They're really, bringing some time away, though. They take them under a minute. Really nice flank there from Godsby, but it's not able to get them the kills in the end. Gushway is now isolated. There's no way out. He's frozen. Fortify isn't going to save you in this situation. He just wants to buy time because he knows they only need one overtime fight win, and it can be that same Blizzard we were just talking about from Bazzi. Yeah. It can win you this map, bring you back into this series. Unfortunately, he was eliminated quite early for the side of the Spark, so he doesn't have that much of an advantage here. Rascal gonna be very slightly in the lead towards that Blizzard. And we'll be able to enter into the marketplace to boost up here over the top for the Bastion to try to get a nice angle set up. Back over to the side there for Rhea. Kinetic Grass is gonna be forced out. Gotsby goes low, taken down! Trehoven finishes him with that accretion. Sleep Dart not gonna connect. Rascal is still just taking pot shots. Experimental Barrier comes out from Rhea to keep them protected. They have the bunker set up here in the sidelines. Trying to keep that card contested. 10 seconds remaining now for the San Francisco Shock, but Rhea's gonna fall. Configuration tank online for Architect Bebe. Going low, eliminated by Moth. It seems like the Shock will be able to push forward into point A. Bazzi has the Blizzard. Will he be able to have another moment like we just saw from Rascal? The thing is, the Shock have so many ultimates here. The Gravitic Flux is going to come online before this push stops. Violet can use Coalescent. If Bazzi gets picked, if he gets shut down, if he doesn't get to use that Blizzard, there's just no real other options here for the Spark to shut down this push. They have the ability to Nano to get him into position. They have Bio Grenades. And they're gonna play passive, they're gonna play safe. The same way the Shock handled the same last defense on this point with the Blizzard. See them trying to scout out, see if anybody's waiting in that side room, trying to bounce. The hyperspheres in. Don't find any tags, but now they're well aware of the positioning of Arctic. So everybody's gonna be dropping down over to the cart, trying to, try to get control, trying to get rid of Smurf. Barrier still coming think. out. Configuration tank is in for Architect. Bazzi forced in. Rascal used the Blizzard. Godspeed's gonna fall. Everybody gonna be frozen here. The sound error is not enough. IDK eliminated. Whose weight goes down. Bazzi can't find any follow up on the Blizzard despite three members being frozen on the side of the shock. Rio will be the last one to go down. As Bebe plays up here onto the high ground, that should be it. himself, but the card is gliding forward. A haunting sight for Bebe as he watches from above. Will drop down to his demise, but for the shock, they advance forward. They're playing against NYXL tomorrow in the Losers Finals. Excellent plays from Shock all series long. It's two back-to-back -back Blizzards. The first to secure the defense and the second to secure their spot in tomorrow's Losers Finals. San Francisco Shock has made the run all the way back despite an early fall. Hangzhou Spark, many ups and downs this season. The highest of their highs was here in the postseason, but their run ends now. The San Francisco Shock, the chosen ones, the favorites to win the finals, they've got one more series to fight through, and then they'll be there if they can take it. For the Hangzhou Spark, it's a sad loss. No one wants to go out on an 0-4. For the Hangzhou Spark, their fans will continue to support them in China in 2020. That they will, as well as those here in the Blizzard Arena, showing their love and support. But for the Spark, this is the end of the line for 20. 19, now just have to look forward to the next year. Shock though, keeping the dream alive of making the deep run 
through the loser's bracket all the way to Philadelphia. And if they play like this tomorrow, again, both teams got to be a bit fearful going up against each other. You guys, we got Emily standing by on the floor with Moth, so let's go ahead and hear from him. Thank you, Wolf and Achilles. I'm down here with the birthday boy, Moth. Blizzard Arena, please give it up for Moth and the San Francisco Shock. Wow, happy birthday, and congratulations on a dominant win against Hangzhou. Now, during halftime, I actually checked in with the coaches, and they said Hangzhou actually were slightly stronger than anticipated. So how did you guys adjust to make sure that they had no chances of coming back? Uh, yeah, I mean, we knew coming into the match that they'd play a pretty <laughs> passive play style, like the DPS played main a lot, countering ours, but um, we, we hadn't scrimmed that recently, but after a little bit of experience early in the Koth rounds, we, we figured it out pretty quickly, and, and uh, uh, fix our uh, play style for the rest of the match. For sure. Now you guys are so close to grand finals, but you have one more opponent standing in your way. How confident are you going up against NY Incel? Uh, we're really confident against New York. I think we have a really good understanding of how they like to play. <laughs> um, what was that again for the audience at home, just in case we didn't catch it? Uh, we have a good understanding of how they like to play. Uh, we'll do some review tonight and tomorrow morning. I think we'll do well against them. Yeah. One night's enough to Make sure that NYU Cell has no chance of beating the Shock? Uh, I think we'll be fine. All right. Well, before you go, we just have one gift for a very special fan. Can we get the jersey, please? Oh, thank you. Hello, fan. What's your name? Uh, I'm Jesse. Hi, Jesse. And here, Moth, if you can just present this to Jesse. And because you're turning 23, you're obligated to hug her for 23 seconds. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, but please hug. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Wolf and Achilles, back to you guys. Thank you very much, Emily. Always great, these Coke victory moments coming through. Mott's uh, face is just like, wait, really? Like, every, every interviewer is trying to up the awkwardness on the hugs every time. <laughs> um, it's I love been, it. as much as we champion the shock here, it's been a, a good season for the Spark as well. Another one of our expansion teams that went really, really deep here into the tournament. Turned the tournament around after, you know, having some ups and downs in terms of the GOATS meta. A yep. lot of uh, rocky uh, stages for them, but at the very end, they bring it all the way into top four, fourth seed coming into this. And, you know, if you're a Hangzhou fan, I don't think you could be disappointed with where they ended up. Uh, definitely not. And especially, you know, if you're a fan of Chinese Overwatch, especially all of the Chinese organizations making it into the playoffs is a fantastic year for them. Uh, but, I mean, what a season it's been for the Spark, especially making it this far through, maintaining that top four spot and just looking strong all the way in. But uh, Shock are the ones who come out on top. Let's go ahead and see who our player of the match is, though, from the side of the Shock, presented by Omen, as always. It's, it's going to be Violet. Violet. Violet had a great series. His Moira, very solid across all four maps. And he saved Sinatra in so many different scenarios, allowing him then to be empowered to get those shields up. And this is a player who's been overshadowed by Jaehong in the past, been overshadowed by Jonak and Twilight on the flex support role. This player may be going to the grand finals, and I think we need to give him credit going into this series. In this 4-0, he played phenomenally. On Anubis, he was the only player to get a stats card in-game. 22% of damage done on that map alone. This guy killed it on the Moira, kept the DPSs alive, and that's why he's your player of the match. Yeah, I mean, 21 deaths across that series, even with a 4-0 victory, is still pretty darn impressive. Constantly eluding those Gravitic Fluxes coming through with the feints, keeping himself safe. Taking a look, though, here is our bracket. One more match here in the Blizzard Arena tomorrow. Fast turnaround for the San Francisco Shock as they will square off against the NYXL in another first of four series. Winner will advance to the grand final to go up against the Vancouver Titans in Philadelphia. It gives me chills just thinking about it. We either get that final third match between Shock and Vancouver to decide who is the real winner this season, or NYXL after that incredible series yesterday gets the rematch chance, their fifth time against the Vancouver Titans. We I cannot mean, lose. It's, it's a great finals, no matter which way you look at it, let's be honest. As, as a viewer, as a caster, it's a win-win situation. It's been a fantastic day, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in on Disney XD. And if you want to see the Watchpoint post show, which you should stick around for, make sure you go ahead and tune in on twitch.tv slash Overwatch League. <laughs>
Brought to you by T-Mobile. Now connecting 99% of Overwatch League fans. Catch your league on America's network. T-Mobile. State Farm. Whatever life brings your way, State Farm is here to help life go right. Xfinity. Xfinity x gives you the speed you need to game like a pro. And by Toyota, official North American partner of the Overwatch League. Toyota, let's go places.